Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, here on Dork Tales. I'm your Dungeon Master, Kelly. I'm using him, uh, he and him as my pronouns, or him and he. Uh, and uh, I am very excited to be here, even though you just missed us talking about Broadway musical numbers off camera. And now they're all stuck in my head. So thank you very much. Uh, cast, mostly Chris, go to hell. Um, but besides that, uh, let's be hopping in to saying hello to everybody because we have a fantastic game for you in store, even though we are all, uh, I think Chris, I think you're the only one that's not a little out of it today. So, you know, enjoy. <laughs> I will use this opportunity to, uh, cause as much mischief as possible. As much mischief as possible. I hope so. Uh, well, mischief is also being managed by Christine. Well, I'm sorry, not sorry about all the musical. Oh, God, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> we are not bringing six into this. Too late. Damn. But yeah, no, oh, I, feel like I love six great. so much. Yes. You're mispronouncing. Oh, God, I can't it. do that because my head hurts really bad. <laughs> And it's hurt all day, which is miserable. Um, but I'm Christine. I use she, her pronouns. And tonight I am playing Lady Alessandra Celeste Martin Barraquel, who also uses she, her pronouns and is our ASMR paladin. Both of the watchers. Nice. Uh, next to you, we have the chat trolling me with lyrics. Thank you. Uh, next to us, we have Caitlin. <laughs> Not lyric quite yet, uh, but you get Caitlin. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and so does Anthea Briarfoot, the halfling artificer alchemist of the group, and she's got a little homunculus named Squish. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, down beneath you, in audio-only form, we have Amy. Hi, that's me. I'm Amy, pronouns are she, her, or they, them. You sound um, so enthusiastic <laughs> to be here. <laughs> As I said in our chat, my prone, I use um, Herm and Harumph. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, we, I'm here to troll you with lyric. We we yeah we're trolling you with lyric. We pulled Amy out of the back to tank early today to make it to game because they've been healing up from dislocating what ribs? Is that what you said earlier? No, I said I think it's my fifth rib. Oh, okay. So it's the, yeah, it's the fifth rib you've one. dislocated this year, I think. But you pair. Mm -hmm. That's a generous estimate. It's probably more than that. And now you're all counting your ribs. <laughs> wait, wait, how do you do you go one two or do you go one two? Is it down or it back and forth? Down. No. They're starting so, on the right or the left? Uh, it doesn't matter. They're both one, two, three, four. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The sternum uh, doesn't count. <laughs> the sternum doesn't count. But you know who does count or who is the count? It's Krista. Bleh. Bleh. I don't always bleh, but I usually bleh, bleh, bleh. When you do, uh, we appreciate hello, it. Hello, I'm Krista. I use she, they, or her, them pronouns. <laughs> we appreciate. Uh, no, that didn't work. Um, I play Carmel Elazarin, our damn uh, battle master fighter, one of those types. And I have energy today, but can it be focused? Time will tell. Fair. All right. And finally, the other person with energy this game, it's Chris. Hello, I am the magical Mr. Christopheles, and I am playing Sindri, our way of the Ascended Dragon. <laughs> I've been sitting on that and smirking for like minutes, so like I'm thank you for bearing with me. So like, weird, that you are. Waiting. <laughs> uh, 100% um, A plus delivery. Uh, I use here their pronouns, Sindri uses here him pronouns. Uh, <laughs> let's no. fucking go. No, I Chris, you're you're rum tum tugger. Oh, no. I'm a hell of a dad. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to know what Chris tugs, but hey, let's start game. All right, everybody. I hope you uh, took notes last time and don't have to resort to your memories to uh, find what happened last game. But for those of you who do not know, let me tell you the important things about last game. Last game, we were sponsored by Bookworm Games. We are this game too. And you should put that down in your notes because you could save 15% whenever you go to bookwormgames.com and use code DORKTALES. They are supporting us. You should support them. And you should go check out their new Fungal Familiars backer kit where you can get enamel pins of these like familiars with like mushrooms on them. They've got like possums and rabbits and all sorts of really cool and cute animals that you can put on your bags, lapels, wherever you would put your pins. Go and check them out today and go get some dice because they're great. I even, I'm tonight I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be assaulting the players with these 
uh, wooden dice from Bookworm Games that just rolled a 19 for me. So I'm very excited. I will be, be leading the charge against you. Um, so uh, last episode, you all traveled to a place called Zorzula's Rest, which was uh, formerly a dwarven mining fortress. You managed to break in through an ancient hot spring that the current occupying goblin force does not know about. From there, you managed to um, uh, attack them with a bed and um, discovered that the goblins weren't too happy about working with their erstwhile, um, I guess, controller, Rukzithid. And... Um, game ended with you all heading into a mess hall and barking at the top of your lungs Sindri did at least uh take me to your leader take me to your leader all right so uh, does anybody have any questions comments or concerns so so many but oh, so many on. concerns so many concerns all right <sighs> so without further ado let's head into game right now i'm very excited for this <clears throat> All right, so without further ado, here we go. The area in front of you glows with blue tinted lava that flows through geometric carvings that run along the wall's top edges. It bathes the room in an eerie light. Three rectangular stone tables stretch the length of the room along several sets of stone benches. There, a handful of goblins sit, shoveling gritty white porridge into their mouths. Another corridor mirrors the one that you are exiting from. Behind you, the dormitories and a pinned goblin lying unconscious beneath a, um, an animate bed lies in your wake. Sindri, you barge through the door and shout out, Take me to your leader. Uh, can I please get a persuasion roll? Can I make it with advantage? Uh... If I make an intimidation roll? Yes. All right. Mm. So, 13, if I use my de determination, that makes it a 16. Okay. So I'll, go with a I'll, go with a I'll go with a 16. All right, 16. Uh, they are all going to turn and stare at you. Silence is going to envelop the room. One of them is going to drop their spoon on the ground. Ow. Oh. And is going to go, like, kind of trying to grab it, breaking a little bit of the stillness. Oh, you can grab that if you need to. Oh, thank you. The rest are going to turn, and one of the psionic goblins with the green heads is going to lean forward. And this, you notice, this one's a bit different. It's a bit bulkier. The veins are a bit deeper. Its head a bit more elongated. It looks at you. Where the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Me? Yeah. I'm Greco. Greco, I'm Sindri. I heard that your leader has been treating you like shit. You heard right. How did you get in here? The, the, the door is here. He points at the front door, which is shut. I have my ways. We are, are alone? A mighty part of, we're a mighty, mighty part of adventurers. Hmm. Listen, we don't have any beef with you. If you leave Fandolin alone, we can get rid of your boss who's been making you raid the town, and we can live in peace. He leans forward and narrows his eyes. What's a Fandolin? Even better. Nearby town. Some of your people went by, took some shit from there, or they tried to. Huh. R roughed up the place. Stole some shiny black rocks. Kiko, Kiko. One of the other goblins leans in. Into his ear. He looks up at you as he hears this, and a smirk splits his green face. I know you. I know all of you. You're the ones that caught covered with poopy. You may have noticed 
But my clothing's clean now. Hmm. You fight Rixithid? Yeah. You take care of monsters down below that hurt yeah, goblins? Yeah, I kick their butt. Yeah. yeah. What was that? How many of you are there? How many can you count? <laughs> I'm going to roll to see how many he can count. One second, please. <laughs> There's four. Four plus. Yeah. Definitely more mm. four plus of us. All right. You can go around. You can go through the entire faculty. Where is Ruxith? Uh, sorry, now nah, what's the name again? Ruxithid? Ruxithid. You. Ruxith. Uh, yeah. Where is Ruxithid? Down below in the uh, in Indigo room. Okay. Will you leave us alone when we come back through? You take care of monsters? We don't give shit. You need Perfect. anything? Ruxithid room, down there. Points down the opposite hallway. You know what? Indigo, Indigo room, downstairs. Okay. We'll take his shit and then go beat him up with it. Do you find anything good you share? Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, that sounds good. Cinder, Cinder will look back at the gang yeah sure all right they're being awfully kind letting us go through and telling us all this stuff and let us just go through i think that's fair all right let's take a take a look hmm. and i'll go to rule 20 there <laughs> all right so looking ahead of you you can see that there is a stretch of um a stretch of corridor around where these goblins are hanging out and eating. There are a pair of doors across the way on the opposite end. One that leads to the north and one that leads directly to the east. What do you do? Uh, uh looking at the goblins again. Ruxithid's room, this one? The points of the door on the north? Now. That's kitchen. Oh, okay. Next door. You're going to hear something shatter inside of the kitchen room. Is that a and monster? Then... What? No, not monster. Oh. That's bustle. And you're going to hear scratching on the other side of the door. Deep, thick claws. Uh, but bless you? Bustle. Oh. Bless you. No, op open door. Um, oh. Okay. It's best girl. Best girl. What? I don't. Okay, don't let's understand. go meet best girl. Uh, I think Carmilla opened the door. Best girl. Carmilla will Car open. Carmilla will open the door. Carmilla, <laughs> can you please do me a favor and make me an athletics check? I've been muted this whole time. Uh, <laughs> one sec. Uh, oh, that's actually real freaking good. Uh, that's a 21. Oh, you just barely beat me, you sly devil. <laughs> um, as you open the door, there's a scrabbling noise and a giant badger launches itself out of the kitchen onto you. Whoa. And tries to tackle you to the ground. Uh, it can does. It, it? You can totally catch it. And it is Ooh. like it is very large. When I say large badger, I need to think like this is like a Malamute. And yeah. it's going to like start Amazing. scrabbling and like spinning in your arms like a very excited oh. corgi. Just <laughs> and it's going to like flip over and is going to like shove its belly toward your face. A jangly collar hangs from its neck. I'm not sure tied on it with a crude rope. Badger act like this before. Best girl. I'm starting to understand, yes. But okay. 
odd. What a good friend. She's very big. I feel like she's bigger than I am. Anthea's going to like scooch, 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 and like do that thing where people measure their heights against each other and try to do that with the badger. I'm gonna hold the badger like a child would hold a small kid, like a very small Ooh. child holds cat, uh, and sort of holds it to stand up. Um, so it it will play along and just kind of like looks around. Its tongue lolls out of the corner of its mouth a little. Oh. I must read you this. <gasps> Bessie burrowed into the outpost through the pantry one day and has been the Enclave's best girl ever since. She's friendly to all and loves belly rubs. Actually, they're actually, best girl. Actually oh in the gosh. module as best girl. I love it. Uh, Carmilla definitely starts sort of reverting back to how she always wanted to treat or how she always tried to treat like the big ass bloodhounds that <laughs> her family always had and sort of like holds it up with one arm and scratches his belly and goes oh yes you're the best badger aren't you the best girl best girl <laughs> yeah she's best girl yeah she's best girl best girl best girl that's bassy hi bassy Hey, girly. <laughs> you think that through the the heavy goblin accent, her name's probably Bessie, but it could it could be Bassie or Bossy. It could be either. Uh, Cinder will give it a little scratch on the belly and then kind of like shove down the hallway to like get by this large, intimidating grand animal that he's never seen before. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so making it to the far end, um, you can see that uh, uh, there is a large thick door there that is shut tightly. Huh. Is... Sindri will look at Carmilla. What do you think the odds are that this is trapped? She pulls herself up from like the fur of this thing's neck. Oh. Uh, very high percentage, I would think. Okay. In on it, probably not. Although they are do seem to be much smarter than most goblins I've met, even more than Droop. Oh, Droop's pretty smart. We're very smart. Oh, I believe it. I speak Maybe take true language. Wow, that's, that's really good. the language you speak that's other than common. Speak. Goblin? Yeah. It's pretty good. None of us be goblin. This is true. I'm starting to think maybe we should learn. You pay, we teach you. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. What about Honestly? in food? We could make you food. Like good food? Or like bad uh, food? Like good food? What kind of food do you like? Not this. One of them is going to pick up a bowl of gruel and throw it across the room. The the oh. por the um, clay um, the clay bowl is going to shatter across the wall, painting it with gruel. And uh, Bessie's going to try to squirm out of your grasp and is going to run up and start licking it off the wall. <laughs> oh well, Bessie seems to like it, but I wouldn't like that either. Um, well, Bessie maybe licks we'll her own just... butt. Uh, that's valid. That's valid. Um, maybe we'll just do what we're here to do and, and kick some butt for you, and then we'll talk about food. Yeah. Okay. I'll think of some recipes. Right. I'm going to open this door. <laughs> okay. And it's uh, probably so, going to blow up in my face. So, the door actually is locked. So, you try the handle and you go... <laughs> However, no needles fire out from the door lock. Uh, no fireball erupts from a hidden compartment. The door just resists you and you kind of bump into it. Well, I'm out of ideas. Uh, <laughs> does anyone want to try and help me knock this door? Is it made of wood? I'd it's just made of wood. Unlock it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Unless you wanted to just kick it down. But Did you already try the doorknob? I'm pretty proficient with these. And she'll, she'll uh, raise up some like tools. Okay. I'm proficient with thieves tools, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, make me, uh, no. make me a roll. <laughs> that is 
because I use sleight of hand. No, thieves you tools check. Use a thieves tools check, but it's the same as a sleight right. of hand check. As well, long as you're proficient unless in both. I'm, but I'm not. <laughs> Are you not proficient in thieves tools? I am, but not in yeah. sleight of hand. Don't worry about it. So yeah, just okay. do a proficiency. So it's better than a sleight of hand check. Yeah. <laughs> Forget I said anything. I, you know what I meant. Well, you didn't, but now this you do. Is, it's not my character. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. So you're gonna. Yeah. So you spend about about a hmm. half a minute fiddling around, and you feel like you've almost got it. Ah, oh, rats. I don't know. Can I hold something for you? I mean, if I did have another hand, the help I could action. Help. Uh, Are you I proficient in thieves' tools? <laughs> I don't believe I am. I don't. I okay. don't know what, if I'm proficient in anything. Then I'm, you can I'm hold her hair, but that's wood about carving. it. Carving. There you go. Okay. Well, unless you want to I use your sword to like, carve this, through the door. Hold that. <laughs> there we go. Shine All a right. flashlight on it. Um, I tried to climb. Dabbing her forehead like a surgeon. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so I if you mean, want to try to re-roll again, Anthea, you may. Oh, okay. Let's try to do better. Hacha! That's better. That's 19. 19, all right. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Holding that, holding your bag for you and dabbing your forehead works. The door is going to submit <laughs> to your dexterous fingers and lock it. <laughs> oh, teamwork. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right the door is going to open and inside you're going to see the, these personal quarters contain a large plush four poster bed covered in silk sheets stone shelves bearing books and ornamental ceramic jars line the walls alongside dust covered banners embroidered with dwarven runes in one corner stands an elegant mahogany desk on top of which is a map and several crumpled notes. While all this is going down, Alessandra's going to just chat with the goblins. Okay. So back with the goblins, they're going to look, look at you, look you up and down. What a little... Some kind of tin man? No, that's armor. No, she's a knight. She's a knight. Are you a knight? Uh... Kind of? I'm a paladin. A friend of her? <laughs> uh, Dan, do you know her? <laughs> I don't know her. You want to be my friend? All right. It's nice to meet you. I'm Alessandra. I'm She'll Dan. She'll a hand to shake. Hi. Oh, I, no, no, no. Humans is dirty. I just washed my hands. Ugh, even worse. Humans is wet. Is it true humans wash their food in water before they eat it? I mean, most races do, yes. Ugh. I'm not human, but though. You're shaped like a human. A lot of things are shaped like humans. I know, it's strange, right? Not many things You're shaped, shaped like, like goblin. A human. Huh? You're technically shaped like human. You've got two no, arms. No, a human is shaped like a legs. big blown up fat, fat goblin. Yeah, but you're just describing everything else as being shaped like humans, so by retrospect. No, they're shaped like goblins, but dumb. Okay, but what came first? I agree, a lot of humans are dumb. Humans or the goblins? We came first, then, but dwarves came before us, and then you came. They were... How'd you get in? Through the door, sort of. A door. You didn't come through a door! Me watching door! One of them's going to shout from the front. I think Lyric is going to turn and point to the door we came through. We came, we came through, through that? Like a hot water. See? Yes. You came through the Where do you think I got room. the bed? Where do you think I got the bed? Oh. He looks very confused for a minute before the one next to him elbows him. From bunk room, dummy. Ah. Why do you want help us? 
Well, personally, I would prefer to help you than kill you. I've killed an awful lot of people, and I'd rather not kill more. <laughs> yeah, we can be friends, Den says. We kill lots of people, too. Stab, stab. He starts miming with his fork. She'll hold out a hand with a fist bump. Oh, my. He will go to bump it, almost forking your knuckles before he, uh, hold on, let me make a deck save. He is going to, like, go, Ugh! and he's going to thrust, and you're going to hear a ding as he accidentally forks the side of your gauntlet. Oh, sorry. I mean, I'm still wearing gauntlets, so. Oh, he bent fork. It got forked up. <laughs> 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 it's funny because I said dirty word, but I didn't say dirty word. <laughs> this is very true. Common is very, stupid language. Very good getting around it. Yeah. So, do you speak deep speech? What deep speech sound like? <laughs> She'll speak deep speech. Uh, um, no. You want to learn it? You start teaching me goblin, I'll start teaching you deep speech. Then you can t speak three languages. Make me a persuasion roll. <laughs> I will give. I will let you roll without disadvantage because this one knows what the number three is. I also did give him like a visual to go with it. Oh, that's fair. Uh, that is going to be a twenty-four. Okay. Yeah, me trade language with you. And while the others are exploring that room, etc., she'll just like start doing a little impromptu like trade of <laughs> language. Okay. So uh, what I want you to do is let's let's do a teaching role real quick. Okay. I want you to do me a favor and make me an uh, make me a. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a charisma roll. Okay. Uh, so charisma or intelligence basically will determine how 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 good of a teacher you are for this. I would prefer charisma. Okay, sounds good. And I will say that you can add your proficiency because you're proficient in your own language. Okay. I'm apparently real fucking good at this. <laughs> did you get an at 20? I did. Okay, so I you're going to have some rudimentary goblin knowledge. I mean, it takes a lot longer than that to learn. Uh, but you'll know oh, that yeah. Briarch means many things. Briarch is like... it's 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 like... It means a bunch of things. It's like aloha. It's hello and goodbye. It it means I surrender and screw you. You know? <laughs> uh, so you will learn many things as you become the pal of Din. Um, meanwhile, the rest of you who are heading inside of the room, you can see that this room is flooded with just junk everywhere. However, as you're looking around, can I please get you to do me a big favor? And that is, does anybody in the room have a passive perception of 15 or higher? Squish. Sindri, you are going to hear soft, dwarven murmuring coming from inside I... of this room. Interesting. I speak dwarven. What do I hear? Who's there? Where are you? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. I'm turned the wrong way. Can you Where hear are you? Me? I'm over here uh, in the corner. Sindri will slowly creep towards the noise. My name's Sindri. Who are you? Who are you? I am Hjoldak. Hjoldak Hollowhelm. You'll hear coming from one of these jars along the shelves. Oh, it's a large so one. It's a canopic jar, a smooth onyx black one with geometric engravings laid into it with blue gemstones. Sindri's going to keep walking slowly towards it and, oh, this is going to be not good. This is Who are bad. You? you speak dwarven very, very mediocrely. I know, I learned it on a boat. My name is Sindri. Sindri. Hello, Helm. Hello, Helm. I used to be the captain here. The last captain that this outpost had. Sindri will, like, go towards the jar and, like, kind of, like, 
kind of like close it, like kind of like squinting is going to turn the jar around. Now, this voice is coming out no louder than a whisper. And as you pick up this jar, you're not seeing anything in it. It's just a jar. And he goes, I, I can see you. Thank you. I need your help, lad. Although we're on opposite sides of the field, you being some type of elf kin and me being a long dead Durgar, I need your help. What happened? Sindri will look kind of like gesture for everyone to come in here. Ah, there's more of you. Why are you talking they... to a jar? Oh. Listen carefully. Oh, I... I don't, I don't speak Dwarvish. I can speak a bit of, I can speak common if need be. Oh. It's easier than me translating. My accent's terrible. So this whispered voice is going to come out of this, and you're going to hear... My name is Huldek Holohem. I was once the mining captain of Zorzula's Rest. When the monsters came here, they took over. They killed me, and they trapped my soul in this jar. Okay, so that's deeply concerning. The monsters are gone now as far as I can tell. But I can help you. I've been trying for years to get the attention of that bleeding goblin that's taken over this room. But it don't listen to me. But you, I know the goblin's plans and I can aid you. If you free me, Anybody wants to, can make me an insight roll. Let's try. I would love to do that. Let's give it a go. 19. Wow. 19. He he is no. earnest that he is willing to help you. Uh, you said it was insight? Insight, please. 17. He, 16. 16. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, all of you are going to be able to determine uh, that he is willing to, to help you and he seems altruistic but he doesn't know nearly as much as he's acting like he does he's That's he's fine. like oh i can help you with the goblin's plans i've been here for long i've overheard it i can help you just let me out of here i've been trapped for so long and i can tell you more about those who the monsters who came before so i sort of call bullshit on that but i don't see why we can't help each other out just a little bit you're not with them are you I'm with them. Lyric is like gesturing to the rest of the party. G Carmilla like, looks no, at uh, Alessandra, who's been like making friends. Uh, not in the way you mean. Good. Well, I need your help. Please free me. It, it, this jar is sealed and it requires a special type of trigger to be opened. I, I can't help I just, you more than that. I just sort of wonder what your plan is here. So if we let you out of the jar, what exactly are you planning on doing? Are you trying to die? or Because or... you don't exactly have a body. I, You're just we're... sort of a head. Will you survive if we take you out? I have a mild case of undeath. Okay. And I should recorporate, I think, I think into, into a phys physiological form. I'm kind of held together by spite. So are many of us, but that doesn't mean you'll get a body back. What if I you got... just disappear into the afterlife? And then you wouldn't be able to help us at all. Yeah. Well, I know that. Which is okay. Uh, You'd be at peace. I, I, I mean, can I we really... just smash the jar? I. Oh. I prefer not, but um, I suppose I mean, it could that get you out. It probably would. It, it it would probably suck a little, but yes, maybe. We do know a master student. Master of what? 
Jarology? Well, I, no, they're Necromancy, working on it, but he, yes. Fine, break me out. You can almost see that the jar is almost like tensing up, <laughs> waiting the pain. Is someone uh, able to do like an arcana check to see if this you would work? Sure, maybe. Uh, anybody who <laughs> is proficient with arcana check. can make me an arcana roll. Oh, I think, am I I think the lyric is. Can I, oh, yeah. can I make a guess? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, you totally yeah, can make a guess. I will. I will. You can also see that it's got like like a like a Rubik's cube oh type puzzle yeah. at the top. Ooh. You can try just to make an investigation check to to open the lock. Twelve, Arcana. Twenty-four, 24 and Thea. It yes. probably would work. Like it's either it it either like really work, or it would you know send his soul into an afterlife, which you know. Oh, so I was partially correct. I think either he will just dissipate to his eternal rest or maybe he'll stay with us but oh, it'll Cyril, free him either way Cyril will poke his head out the door Alessandra so Briak means Bri <laughs> sorry to disturb you um, there's a ghost in a jar I'd like you to uh, w uh, witness uh, while we let it out we need to tap this Uh, All right, I practice. I practice. Me go back no gear. Don't buy a store, not biblioteca. More flame. Yeah, a little flim. bit more of a uh, on the back throat. Mm. There. Biblioteca. There you go. Okay, so. Fuck's sake, Krista. There, there's a there's a Duragard dwarf in the jar, or a ghost in the jar. Uh, he says he's mostly held together by spite, uh, and it's like 50-50 if he will go to the afterlife or uh, help be able to help us with our uh, ridding the place of villains. It, admit, admittedly, I sort of like with? the idea of just smashing the jaw. It sounds kind of fun. For science. Okay. Sindri drops it from standing. <laughs> okay. Um, For science. Would you like to make me an athletics check to spike it? Or are you just no, dropping I just it? No, I'm just going to drop it like a cat from a table. Okay, you're going to hear. Did that did hurt? It, did, it, did, it, did, it did it break? It did not. It just kind of bounced and rolled and is going to roll over near Lyric's feet. Or hooves. I think Lyric's gonna pick it up. Oh, my coccyx! I didn't even know what I still had one of those. those. Carmilla is you, going to swing out Lightbringer the mace. Although, <laughs> Did I try? it might be some phantom pain. Oh, that could work. Um, here, yeah. let's just put it on a surface, and Carmilla, you can try <laughs> and smash. Just t-ball. <laughs> okay. Uh, Carmilla, go ahead and make me. Duck me when that happens too, holding it up. Make me an little, attack oh, roll with know. advantage because it's T ball. Amazing. <laughs> uh, ooh, that's not terrible. Watch um, the horns. 22. Uh, all right. How do you want to do it? <laughs> uh,. I think if um, our, our yeah, lyric is like holding it above her head and kind of ducking, uh, just gonna tee up and just swing the mace. Uh, this does do extra damage against undead, so I don't know if this helps break it better. Oh boy! <laughs> or it hurts um, him. I don't know. All right, so um, there is a swirl um, of air as you and a blast of of holy light as you smash across the room, uh, breaking this vase into just hundreds of pieces. Dust is going to swirl out. And a moment later, this creature tumbles to the ground out of nowhere. Its 
it's a small, well, it's, it's a Duragar with stones glowing and growing out of all of his hair follicles, almost like, like salt crystals. His skin is this ashen complexion and his eyes are pinpricks of green light that glow with un otherworldly power. He hits the ground and rolls because Ugh, my Dwergar. Ugh. I terribly sorry. I'll offer him a hand. I thank you. Oh, he really rang my bell. And he'll stand up and kind of crack his neck, which sounds like rocks being smacked together. Just Oh. You're right. Deeply unpleasant. Ah. Uh, I was right. I'm... I'm still here. Good. I thought that my proximity to some of the ancient crystals might keep me alive as an ashen right? An ashen white? It's nice to know as that even us... Uh, me. This. A ghost kept alive by magic crystals. Oh, it feels so good to have feet again. Oh, and the rest of me. Oh. Oh. It has been. Do you, oh, do you feel like you need to just take a big stretch? Or no, or do you not feel like you were cramped at all in there? Oh. I'm just curious, you know, uh, oh. for science. I do not know what this science is, but this is very comfortable. Just do the stretching. Oh, that's good. I'm very glad. You know, I'm really glad. I've been stuck with these goblins for years, ever since they took over this facility. Oh. It's still so glad to see humanoids, even the ones that speak bad dwarven. <laughs> I can speak worse dwarven if you like. Uh, does did Rexith leave anything uh, useful around here? And Cindy will start like rummaging through the trash. Well, absolutely. Go ahead and make me an investigation check to look around. May I assist? Uh, yes, you may. Health action. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Uh, so, uh, looking around, you are going to uh, take a look. And um, did you roll with advantage with Carmela? Yeah. Okay. All right. So with a 15, uh, looking around, you are going to be able to see along the north wall, there's a small section engraved with four dwarven runes that you'll be able to read from left to right as storm, death, light, and wind. As well, you'll see that there are uh, papers all over the desks uh, here that are, one sec, a crudely drawn map of the fan Fandolin region or the Fandelver region. Um, with a kind of just just a crudely drawn it, it's just a crudely drawn map of the Fandolin region. Is there anything um, marked but, off on it? Oh, sorry. There is not. There is nothing marked off on this map. But it looks like a private copy, and you can see that, like, looking at this, this looks like that. An, you feel like it was traced from another map just given the way that it is um, uh, that it is kind of like cut into the sheath with uh, with the pencils. Um, but as you're looking around, Hjuljak will say, as a first offering, let me help. There is secret compartment in, uh, in bed, uh, on the bed frame. And then here, there is secret stash in this room. Um, you need to press. Um, you need to go storm, death, light, wind. Press those runes, door opens. Storm, death, light, wind? Yeah, it helps if you speak Dwarven. Yeah, I don't know which one's I which. should and oh. not speak Hey, those. guess what? Remember, storm, death, light, wind. Do 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 do. It actually plays that. <laughs> And then <laughs> I install music myself. 
and a secret door will open. Yo! Nifty feature, indeed. Quite, the st- quite interesting. Yes, I am a big fan of music. Oh, me too! That's yeah, what I'm I, all about. Yeah, I noticed you have nickel harp. Do you also play bagpipe? No, um, but I do have an automaton and this other thing that's sort of like a little... And she'll pull out like a little, little like box-shaped thing with a stylus and it plays like a very atrocious, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> like MIDI music? Basically. That is amazing. Such technological innovations have happened since I last drew breath. Although technically, I'm only drawing breath now just to power words. Many things have still, happened. Still counts, it does, I understand that. You're right, it's very... Ugh. Anyway, please, take whatever you'd like. These possessions were all mine in life, but... I don't need them now, because, you know, no life. That would make sense. On the other side of the door... The stale air in the vault to the north indicates it hasn't been opened in many years. And Cindery, as you take a look inside, you are going to see a dust-covered assortment of gems, coins, and cloth. Enough that it's going to make a blush rise to your cheek. For as you look inside, you are going to see a multitude of ancient Durgar coins. 56 platinum pieces, 350 gold pieces, 189 silver pieces, 304 copper pieces, as well as four pieces of jade that are easily worth um, 10 platinum each. And one large peridot stone, probably worth as much as all of the platinum there. Additionally, folded neatly against the wall are three richly woven but dusty Durgar tapestries and a velvet brocade all worth a significant amount of gold. Sindri is going to just like stop. Yeah, go ahead, take them. I don't need them anymore. You saved me from being in a jar. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sindri will... I'm going to need a hand here. I don't have pockets. I have a backpack. I can, I can help. Wow, treasure chest! Is no one wants what's in the in the bed? Treasure chest. It's oh, very I will, useful. I, I was I will look in the bed. So looking underneath, you will he'll instruct you to where you see that there is an outline of the of the bed's frame, and as you push on the compartment, a panel opens. Uh, inside, you will find just two things: a dagger with a serpentine blade, and a gem. Is very useful there. That is a dagger of venom. It's very useful. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, Carmilla's probably about to like test the blade and it stops, just keeps it in its sheath. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Do not cut self on that. Is very, very useful. Is uh, It's not magic, but uh, it does magic work. So. It has compartment in it. Well, I guess it is magic, but like, you know, it's it's poison magic. You know, usual Durgar stuff. But the other thing there is really useful. That is elemental gem. Nifty. Yes. Do you mind if I take a look at that dagger? Thank you. Yes. You take all of it. Gem Whoa. has friend. Is there a, a word to use it? Uh, the gem? Uh, hold on. We're hey, not going to say it now, but... It. Uh, one moment, one moment. Uh, no, you just break the gem. Yeah. You break, you, you throw the gem down like smoke bomb, and then water element will come out and fuck shit up. Oh, so, friend. Useful in a pinch? <laughs> Very. Or if you need to clean out horse stables, yes. That's also a potential. Yes. It's very useful. You take that and you... Uh, 
look, I am. Um, I must be honest, though. I feel guilt. I don't know. It's much about plans. The uh, the goblin, the unicorn goblin, comes in here sometimes, but lately, much more infrequent. He seems distracted. He's poring over strips of paper, running out all manic-like. I think he's planning something deeper in Outpost. Probably... Probably something that they set up when they came here and took it from us. Who were they? Were they always like this? The extra psychic? No. They must have stumbled onto what they left behind. The Who's Mind they? Flayers. Ah. My. Who did they leave behind? I have been trapped in jar since they came. Those cruel tentacled fuckers. They thought it would be funny to trap my soul in a jar. I do not know what happens to my facility after that. But they wanted something down in the, 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 the depths. Do You may not know because you are here, but had they said, did the goblins run them off or did they just leave? No, they left, I think. It was quiet for a very long time before goblins show up. And then goblins show up, and then they start looking funny. Mm -hmm. And then this one, the one who stays in this room, has big fucking crystal stuck in the middle of his head, brains exposed like the inside of an orange. Wow. We are best to be on our way then to find this creature if you need help I can guide you down like I said I was captain of facility I know much about facility if there's any old machinery I can also get it working again I doubt that the Alethids were using you know Durgar D40 on the minecarts uh Kelly uh would, are illithids common knowledge? Illithids? I, I think yes. Uh, if you would like to, you can make me, uh, make me an, uh, make me an arcana roll or a, um, or a history roll. Either of those, um, and we'll say that it will be uh, to know much about them. Three. Yeah. No. You've heard like ghost stories of things called mind flayers, but you don't know anything about them. I feel like it's it's like it's almost like vampires or like you're like, yeah, you know that there's this like thing that exists in the dark somewhere. But like, do they actually exist or not? Who knows? Yeah, I don't I think that's good. <clears throat> huh. Can I make yeah, that def- roll too? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Alessandra, you do not need to make this roll. You are a paladin that fights ab- aberrations. Did you say you could roll history or what? what you can roll history as well, yeah, because okay, of right. uh, their history intertwines with the history of Faerun pretty regularly in these modules. Could I roll Arcana? Yes, you may. <gasps> yes. Okay. I did I did roll. That's why I did this. What'd you get? But, uh, 26. <laughs> oh, hell yes. Uh, 21. 21. All right. The three of you <laughs> and, and Alessandra are all going to know uh, that Mind Flayers are evil creatures from the uh, from the outer planes, um, particularly from the far plane, uh, that devour minds, uh, have psychic powers, and um, are are freaking evil monsters. Um, and with above twenties, you'll also know that they reproduce by putting uh, little tadpole versions of themselves inside of people that uh, corrupt them and turn them into mind flayers. I thought vampires were bad. Yeah, at least at least they like seduce you. Uh-huh. Um, but I they... mean, we don't know that they don't. 
Um, with the 20 higher, you also know that they are very, very big on experimenting on lesser creatures and acting through intermediaries and thralls. So using goblins as pawns, totally their MO. Although usually they go a little higher on the food chain than goblins. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, convenience possibly. Yeah, I guess you work with what you got. Yeah. Uh, Hildek? Yeah. Uh, yes, if if you could lead us to where you think uh, this other goblin might be staying or where he's working, that would be very useful. Yes. I can do this thing. We head downstairs now into the mines. Look, I am very hearty, but I, I have not fit a fight in a long time. So I will try to help you, but I am not warrior presently. Oh, uh, that's okay. Okay. But we appreciate the the help. Yes. We have squish anyway. We're fine. Yeah, we what, do. What is squish? Anthea will hold up squish. Who is chilling in her pocket? That's a good question, honestly. Uh, well, actually, I do know what Squish is. Squish is actually a, a potion that somehow uh, escaped its vial. So maybe I don't know exactly how he did it, but uh, huh. if I recreate the steps, then I can recreate him again. Although perhaps uh, we should just stick to one Squish. No, no, no. no. It, the, 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 the stone. The stone. Show, show off the stone. So wish we'll go. It'll be a little heart stone right there. The stone is very important. Excellent. Well, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Squishy. Hmm. If you need to go down into the mines, there are two ways. There is a... Uh, uh, well... We probably should go down through carts, or we go down through uh, the the bunks. There is elevator there. You pick. Which one would you like to do? The elevator was broken. It was seemed yeah. like it was jammed in. Mm. Carts, carts, carts. Oh, that's carts, right. You went down the chute, carts, didn't carts. you? So perhaps we should try the carts. Yeah. All right. Come. It's just this way. Okay. Uh, Sandra is going to leave final like, instructions for Dan on practicing. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I, I learned. Um, can you repeat one more time that phrase? Christine can't do it right now. Sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> I can't make uh, do so. That. He'll say, that sound, sounds like something Ruxithid say in sleep. What does Ruxithid look like? Mm, tall. Tall like goblin, but tall. He not used to be so tall. Now he's tall like, uh, uh, more like, more like blue one points at Sindri. Does he have tentacles? No, no. He has big rocking brain. Okay. Oh, and he he um he fly sometimes. No, uh, no, more like um float. Yeah, hold on. And um, Din is going to run around and is going to go. He's going to rush into uh, into the kitchen, look around, come back out holding Bessie, and is going to like pick Bessie up beneath the arms and kind of like drag her feet, like her lower hindquarters above the ground, like she's doing a spooky ghost float. <laughs> So I feel like the bed, because apparently it hasn't moved since it entered that corridor, is like wedged in there. It's trying to like levitate because it has a 30 feet flying speed. It's like kind of mimicking, but is like wedged 
and not doing so well. Oh. Like that? Yeah. Like that. I don't like this Rexithic character. Yeah, he's kind of a dick. Kind of spooky. Let's go kick yeah. his ass. Yeah, kick his yeah. back. <laughs> can, can someone help me dislodge the bed, please? Oh. It's gotten a little jammed. I Do that. Do are that. We, are we taking the bed with us? Well, it's, it seems like a waste to leave it. But Should I mean, we... they're using it. They'll be down oh. a bed. We can give it back after. Well, I suppose. It only lasts for about an hour. So I guess about 40 minutes? Okay. I could try to help. But it would be appreciated. And Lyric's gonna try and like shoulder in and like release it and wedge it free. Okay, make me a Anthea. strength roll. I'll help. And her I'll 13 help. strength. All right, everybody, make me strength rolls to undo okay. the bed. Actually, Ten. 13's kind of generous for her. But anyway. 18. Uh, well, guess who can't roll a one because they're a halfling. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and then 21. That's so great. fitting, though. That's an 11 instead. Well, you, got, you got a 21 lyric? Yeah. I'm going to say that it, you're going to just like, you're probably just going to kick it with your goat feet and it's just going to go eh, and just de <laughs> dislodge. What did you get, Anthea? Oh, 11. <laughs> 11. All right. And uh, Carmilla? 18. 18. All right. So you are going to uh, basically be able to pry it away uh, using your um, using that momentum and strength from Lyric's kick. It's just... <sighs> probably like wiggles happily and floats <laughs> being helpful. The bed is all is actually going to like tip one of its pillows to you at like a hat. Huh. Not sure what I expected, but wasn't that? Huh, I'll take it. All right. Are we going to put it on top of the minecart and I'll sit on top of the bed? I mean, the bed floats, so Lyric can just sit on it. This seems so. Just tether it to the back. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think this is a perfectly good idea. Let's just hope the shaft doesn't get really narrow at some point. So I don't really like the idea of like sli sliding down a, like a mine shaft on a bed. It gives me like kid rides down a flight of stairs on a mattress. <laughs> oh my god, absolutely. Uh, 100%. So... No, it's, it's just big uh, Nemo's Adventures in Dreamland. Oh, big, or... big Nemo energy, of course. Let, let's get going before we get little Nemo energy, really. But yes. <laughs> All right. So with that, you start making your way toward the um, toward the door along the south wall, kind of over by the bunk rooms. Um, Cole Jack will uh, head over that way and will give the door a try. And he's going to kind of grunt at it when he does. Ah, the door is locked. Do any of you have a pick? Or a pickaxe, either way we'll open the door. I have... ka -ching! A bobby pin. I do not know this bobby, but perhaps he will be able to open the door. Yeah, you it's so good! Give it a try. I'm gonna give it a try. Let's go! That was not very good. Um, but if I... <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't think that's gonna work. Eleven. <laughs> All right. Oh, that worked last time. And as you're looking at it, you're going to see why it is not working. The door has been jammed shut. You can see oh. places along its frame where not only has the lock been completely stuffed with detritus. Detritus? Detritus? Detritus. Uh, stuck, stuffed yeah. with crap. Uh, but you can see that the <laughs> goblins have nailed the door shut oh. and have like slammed pegs and pittons pitons whatever I'm, I'm just all I'm totally 
good on words tonight, uh, but have just <laughs> nailed the door shut. That would pose a problem. We, we shut the door because there's monsters. That's fair. I would do the same. Uh, hey, is Hugh still kicking around somewhere? I have him! She's gonna whoop from her back. Here he is. Okay. Do you want me to chop down the door? Please. Okay. Let's try All it right. this way. Take two! All right, make me an attack roll. <laughs> you can, let's alternatively, go, you can make go, me an athletics check go, using the axe. I think attack is better. Because I'm at least proficient. <laughs> can can I uh, help by like holding the axe <laughs> behind her head as she swings it back and almost tilts over, and then I'll give it a bit of a push as she goes to swing? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Damn it! All right. Okay, that's not bad. I'm gonna use my proficiency. I mean, not my first, my determination. All right to make it a dirty 20. <laughs> okay, so uh, with a mighty swing, you are going to shatter the bit of barricade and like supports that they have put in. Uh, and the door is going to go <laughs> and the door is going to open. Oh, I have to write that down next time the pick doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you. Right, right tool for the job. All <laughs> right. And who's heading in? Yes. All right, Anthea. <laughs> oh. you, you step into the room, seeing that it is... Dark? Floor to ceiling, glass windows, overlook a churning oh. lava sea. So actually, it's somewhat lit in here. Three large blackened anvils stand in a row, and an unfinished pieces of weaponry and armor litter the room. Above, a stationary conveyor of buckets cast an ominous shadow across the forge floor. Standing at each of the anvils is what appears to be the ashen husk of a gray-skinned dwarf, all three pantomime metalwork in eerie synchronization. As you open the door and step in, they turn toward you and brandish sharp chunks of black rock. With angry car eyes, the figures lurch forward. Oh, no. I would like an initiative roll, please. These look like mindless versions of whatever Hjoldak is. I'm just gonna move that bed up a tiny bit. Okay. Yeah, I haven't been able to control it since it got in that corridor. <laughs> oh, it literally got stuck? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, that is dual in 14s and a 19. Oh, these guys are great. Okay, so... All right, check an initiative right now. I have, uh, I have Armilla with a 21. Then I have Ashenwright one. Then I have, uh, I have a tie between Sindri and Anthea. And then going down in initiative, I have Oh, pardon me. It wasn't Sindri. It was... It was Lyric and Anthea and the bed all going at once. Then Ashen Wright 2 and Ashen Wright 3. Then I have Ella and Sindri at the bottom. All right. All right. Top of the initiative, Carmilla. You are going to hear a, a little... Oh, dear type of noise come out of Anthea as this battle is joined in here. All right, what do you do? What does who do? What does Carmilla do? Okay. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was first, but I wasn't sure. Um, I think she's gonna hearing this and hearing Anthea panic uh, not panic but exclaim as much as Anthea exclaims um, I think she will 
uh, run in, and I think I can make it to here with 30 feet of movement. Yep, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, um, just barely. And then I think I will... Can I take the dodge action? Yes, you may. Cool, I'm going to do that. Okay. And just sort of pull out Lightbringer and just pull her baseball stance again and kind of wait to see if someone comes at me. All right, absolutely they will. Um, it is the first Ashen White's turn. The a- Ashen White, I should say. Uh, the Ashen White is going to make a low groaning moan in its throat and is going to say, send you to him and lurches toward you. You're not even sure that it's perceiving or thinking, but it's just consumed with rage. Uh, It is going to make two attacks against you with disadvantage. Uh, That is going to be... So the first one is going to be an 18 with disadvantage. And the second one's going to be a 19. That's exactly my AC. Okay, so that is going to be two hits, but you also... But I'm dodged. Did you... I rolled a disadvantage. disadvantage? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember if it was disadvantage or plus two. So you actually killed a crit with that, just so you know. Yay! So it was useful. Um, all right. So you are going to take two hits. They're pretty minor, though, especially at your level. So that is going to be... Um, you're going to take seven points of necrotic damage. Or, pardon me. Uh, you're going to take... Uh, six points of necrotic damage and nine points of necrotic damage. A total of 15. Do you have any resistance to necrotic damage? I don't believe so. Okay. And uh, you will have disadvantage on the next attack roll you make before the end of your next turn. Disadvantage on the next attack. All right. So it strikes out at you with this dark shard of, of necrotic energy. And as it does, it plunges underneath your armor, scratching you, and you're going to feel necrotic energy subsume your body. Um, Lyric, it is your turn. What do you do? Or Lyric, or Anthea, or Bed? Uh, I will allow Anthea to go first. Because I think Anthea is a little bit closer. She's in the room. Um, okay. I'll go first this time. She will doop, doop, doop a little bit into the room and then throw a firebolt a fireball. Yeah. All right, go ahead. At the one yeah. that is uh, fighting with fighting Carmilla. Carmilla. Yeah, of course. Let's go. Let's go. That's not a one because I'm a halfling. So many times this episode. Let's go. I can do it until I get two ones in a row, but I did not. That's going to be a 15, and I don't think I have determination. Oh, actually, wait. I think you do have a determination. Someone bought it back for you. Oh, oh really? Oh, right away? Uh, or I forgot to take it off the screen. Either way, uh, let me just double check. I think you forgot to take it off. Yeah. I forgot to, yeah, I need to really figure out a way to chain that. Okay, so never mind. I'm just going to go... There we go. And I'll make a note to remove this from the edit. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't uh, work. So... That's okay. Uh, That's okay. You have a something good happens. So I'm going to spend that to allow that to hit. Oh, thank you. All right. Roll me damage. Okay. And now you have determination. Oh, thank you. Oh, you got double determined. Whoa. I'm so determined. Sorry. I wanted to roll a different. You know what? I'm going to keep that something good happens. And you can just spend your determination. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then immediately get a rebot for you. Perfect. There, now no one um, has that's... to be refunded. <laughs> 13 fire damage. 13 fire oh. damage. Fire is going to lash out of your hands, slamming into that ashen white. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, it's going to let out a deep oh. scream of pain. So I have a c- alchemical sa- savant. Mm-hmm. And um, it says, whenever I cast a spell using my alchemist supplies as the spellcasting focus, which is always, um, you gain a bonus to one roll of the spell. Now, is that per long rest? Do, would gr- you say? That's a great question. It doesn't say. You can't use our... Oh, so, yeah, it has to be an artificer spell, but okay. Yeah. 
But I use yeah. artificer tools for all of them, or alchemist tools for all of them. Uh, we'll just say um, I'll research this more after this episode, but I think for now okay. you can just apply it to anything that has those damage types. Okay. Okay, that would be uh, four more damage then, so that would be 17 damage. Okay. Okay, 17 damage. Fantastic okay. a bit of burning there. Um, all right. And what else are you doing? Squish is going to go. All right, All right, get up, Squish. You can do it. I believe in you. That was not... I did not believe in you hard enough, but that's okay. I'll believe in you harder next time. That was an 11. An 11? That's not going to work, yeah. unfortunately, for Squish. It's going to go... Uh, and is going to fire, but the the um, Ash and White is going to be able to dodge out of the way. Uh, and oh, that is going to be... Oh, a little bit. Oh. All That's right. Okay. Um, so, uh, it is going to be Lyric in the bed. Yeah, so I just noticed that I have a feature on this, my my animated object, my dancing item, is it's got a irrepressible dance. When any creature starts its turn within 10 feet of the item, the item can increase or decrease, my choice, the walking speed of that creature by 10 feet until the end of the turn, provided the item isn't incapacitated. So that's handy for Alessandra, because um, I'm I'm definitely giving a plus 10 to everyone on our team. Okay. And a minus 10. Yeah. Uh, well, that will also apply to Sindri as well. He's within 10 feet. Uh, yes, it will. Yeah, so our team. Okay. Um, beep, beep. Yeah, handy. But okay. uh, I think that means that Lyric is going to pass through Alessandra Square, if that's allowed. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 is where I end up, right inside. And I want to cast a spell. Okay. I have a really silly idea All right. that includes casting using one of my sorcery points because I haven't really used those yet okay. from my meta magic adept feat to enlarge uh, Carmilla. Okay. To give you plus one d four extra damage and make you large. But also, I want to enlarge Squish. Understood. So Squish is tiny, so he'll just be small like me. Yeah. So like four <laughs> feet tall. <laughs> yeah. All you right. Know, maximum possible size available until the spell ends. Target has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Target's weapons also grow. While these weapons are enlarged, targets attack with them deal 1d4 extra damage. All so. right. That's my um, twin spell on you two. Does Squish does Squish's attacks count as weapons? Um, uh, I think they're spells. So, I think it's very funny. Yeah, it's, it's very it's funny. Totally we're going with it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so, Carmilla. Oh, and... four strike ranged weapon attack. Sorry. Okay. So uh, Squish is going to hit the ground and bubble and just kind of grow. And Carmilla, you're <gasps> going to feel yourself swell and grow and you're almost going to clock yourself out on these floating bucket, like carts above you. <laughs> oh, watch your head. Um, and then bonus action bardic inspiration. <laughs> Take sounds it, good. Carmilla. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Are you going to try to get the bed through here? It can move. I feel like it might get jammed again, but I sort of have this mental image of it trying to like walk along the walls. It's floating, obviously. It is floating. It is floating. So let's see. It's got 30 feet floating oh, movement. 10, so I guess 15. 5, 10. I will 15, spend us something 15. good happens to get it in the room. Sure. Wherever that ends up being, it's probably like on top of Lyric somewhat. Here, I will put it right there and say it is not blocking Alessandra's path because it is if a floating is bed. Technically in the room and within range, it can attack because I can yeah. do. And uh, it's, it's dance thing is not, um, is not an action, that right? Doesn't, 
No, that's just a, a, a feature. Um, so the fun thing about this is that I can, when you use your Bardic Inspiration feature, you can command the item as part of the same bonus action you use the Bardus you use for Bardic Inspiration. So I apply Bardic Inspiration to Carmilla, and then the bed can do a force-empowered slam. All right, slam the bed. Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, stupidest turn, and I love every second of it. I've been waiting for this for so long. Of course, then I rolled a four, so it's only like a... What's my... It's probably not a hit. No. Does, does the bed have pack tactics? So, no, it's not. No, it's a dwarf bed. It's not like a polycule's bed. But for some hey, reason, hey, it, it is has dark from a barrack. It's used meat. to having friends. Fair. It has snack tactics because I eat crackers in it. Snack tactics? <laughs> it is immune to psychic and poison damage, though. Oh, that's I good. I mean, it's, it's not a bunk bed, though, so it doesn't have stack tactics. Mm -hmm. No. No. Uh, so it will it will attempt to slam and will fail. All right. So uh, the bed has failed. Um, all right. Lyric, is that everything on your turn? I do believe so, yes. Okay. Uh, the ashen whites at the back, one is going to lurch forward and go, and is going to hurl a pair of these dark, dark crystalline structures directly into the bed. No, not the bed. What type Take of damage me. does it do? Necrotic. Oh, let me double check if it's got vulnerability to necrotic. I don't think most beds do, but you know. No, it's it's immune to psychic and poison. Yep, these are not but psychic or poison. Have an AC of sixteen. I rolled a twenty-one as my base. Then you succeed. All right, two shards of necrotic energy are going to slam into the bed, dealing 10 points of necrotic damage and six points of necrotic damage. Okay. Uh, it will I, also I have prefer disadvantage on its thing. first attack. Okay. Uh, and the one in the middle is then going to roar and charge towards Giant Woman and is going to make an attack with disadvantage. Uh, that is that you just killed a hit with your dodge. There you go. And you just, uh, Carmilla, would you like to make me an opportunity attack on this one? Because you just made it a botch. I absolutely would. Uh, what, how is my, it's, it's just a bonus damage to my attack. It's bonus so damage. Works, so it's right? an extra D4 on damage. Um, uh, but uh, that includes if you roll a crit. And remember you have bo Bardic Inspiration too. Oh, that, uh, I think I'm okay without it because that'll be a 21. That's going to be a hit. Giant woman. Cool. <laughs> I just want to see you turn into a giant woman. Are these guys undead? Uh, these guys are, in fact, undead. Fuck yeah, extra d6. Okay, uh, so that's an extra d6, an extra d4, and... And then a regular d6. Uh, yep. well, that's not great. Oh, wait, I took great weapon fighting. I can re-roll one of those. Mm-hmm. That's a five, haha. <laughs> okay, so that's six, 11, plus four is fifth. Oh, it's a plus one, so 16 damage. Holy crap, that's a good hit. All right, and are there any other things that Lightbringer does aside from the extra damage? Uh, not that I have noted. Okay. Um, I can double check, but uh, not. That I don't. I, wrote I think it's just sheet. the damage. Uh, so uh, this one lurches um, toward you, toward you, stumbling over one of the ancient buckets that used to hang from the ceiling, and you're going to take that opportunity just to crank him. Yeah. Anything else on on yes. uh, anything else I, I need to know? Hell, I'm sending you there. <laughs> He moans at you, and it's Alessandra's turn. Okay, how damaged do these things look now? Well, you'll have to get into the room, but one, well, yes, two, but three. Uh, I, I would just say, make it inside the door. honestly, they're holding up pretty well. Okay. Then I guess I will do this. Um, Moonbeam. 
Ooh, hell yes. 10 foot diameter, so I'm going to angle it to only hit those two that are closest. Um, and yell out to everybody to not walk into it, because it will indiscriminately hurt people. Um, so... It's when they enter this spell's area on the first time on a turn, or it starts its turn, so it won't hurt them now. But when they start their next turn, it will hurt them, and they will have Sounds to make a con save. good. We're going to use blue for the moonbeam, because it's easier to see. Okay. There we go. All right, a blast of moonlight shun shudders down from the heavens as Alessandra enters the room and calls out uh, in the name of the moon. Uh, hmm. And uh, anything else you're doing on your turn? I guess bonus action stance. Okay. All right, that's your turn. That's Sindri. Sindri's going to like like as he's turning the corner he's like uh uh just very confused with what's going on here 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 40 cuz i have an extra 10 feet of movement this round yep mm -hmm. uh j just monk things here i am uh okay uh, make... now that will make you run through um a threatened square Oh, it will. Yeah, so I guess I'll just stand on the other side of the bed. Okay. Uh, and then I'll do attack, attack, and first attack is a uh, 19 to hit. Hit. All right. So I'll use my... Uh, these are like ashen monsters, right? They are like ashen crystal Duragar. Okay, this gives me... Uh, I'm going to use my fist, which are magic weapons for this. Sounds good. Uh, so that'll be uh, seven points of bat of magical bashing damage. Okay. And then another attack. 18 to hit. Hit. All right. Nine points of bashing damage. Beautiful. Uh, this thing's starting to look kind of crumbly. Martial arts attack. For a 17 to hit. 17 to hit is a hit. Uh, so that's another six points of bashing damage. Uh... Do I have to declare a flurry of blows, or do I can I make that call after I? You can. You um, technically you should do it beforehand, but I'll be nice to you this once. Okay, cool. So if this does not kill him, I'll use it again. All right. So... Smash your lights. Okay, and that's a twenty to hit. So the natural twenty or unnatural? No, uh, dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Uh, so All right. Another eight points of bashing damage. Oh man, you think that this that if the bed hits him, this thing's done. Parts of the stone are crumbling off of it as you just throw martial art attack after martial art attack into the side of it. Just like He's kicking it in the ribs repeatedly, trying to, every time it get, steps Ow. out of the moonbeam, just kicking it back in. Ow. No, no, Ow. no, Ow. stop. <laughs> okay. All right, top of the initiative then, we have Carmilla. Hello. Uh... We're going to take a couple of attackages. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I'm going to uh, probably do both attacks on the one furthest away from everybody else. Okay, I don't want so the one that the one that just bought. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take both my attacks on them. <clears throat> Uh, well, one of them is definitely going to hit. Uh, the other one is going to be a... Uh, yeah, because one of them is a dirty 20. Yep. The other one is going to be a 10. What's your bardic is it a d8? Oh, I believe it's a d... I think it's a d8 at level 6. I think go you to are right. It is a d8 now. Yep. Okay, and I'm you have determination. Use... Yes, so I'm going to use Bardic and hopefully roll not terrible. It's a two, uh, so that is a 12. Um, but then I'm going to uh, also use my determination to make that a 15. And remember that each creature within uh, five feet of the has to make a con save. Choose. Yeah. Okay, so. Um... That was a 12. Yeah, is your proficiency bonus is plus three right now, so that's only a 15. Uh, yes. 
I will spend that, that something hit, good it. happens that was in the wings. So go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. You could use something good happens for me to reroll the bardic. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, perfect. Then it does more damage. Well, hopefully it will do more damage. That's a four. So that would be a 17. That would hit. Hooray. Okay, so that's two con <laughs> saves from me, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes. What, what's your uh, number, Amy? Fifteen. One is the uh, the one to the north failed, and the one that um, Carmilla just hit succeeded. Uh, so okay. it will uh, that one will take four damage. Yes. Four thunder four damage. Thunder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The one that failed will take four. Uh, yeah. Okay. As a whoops, clap whoops, just explodes. Whoops, whoops. I love the whoops. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, all right. So then I'm also going to use a, um, uh, superiority die on one of the attacks. Um, do you need the damage broken down? No. So long as it's, uh, basically as long as it's not poison. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, the, I get a D4 on both of those. So and don't forget the extra D6. That's a lot of ones. Does Great Weapon Fighter allow me to roll all my ones and twos? or? Just oh, well, one? I guess the other thing is that um, is Lightbringer a great weapon? It's a two-handed weapon. It is a two-handed weapon? Okay. I believe so. Uh, let me double check. I've, but... I've been wielding it as one. Oh, maybe it's not. Uh, we'll find out. We'll race so. the chat to tell us. Uh, da, 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 da. It's a mace, right? It is a mace. Is it versatile? That's the question. Uh, no, it is not, yeah, unfortunately. A simple weapon. Yeah. Then why am I using this? Because uh, it does the okay, extra damage. I can't reroll anything. Um. Okay. Well, you just need to nail a, lot a longer handle ones. onto it. Apparently. I can help. Uh, all right. <laughs> yes, please. Um, and, okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, eight uh, plus four is 12, plus four is 16, plus my strength twice is four and four. So 16 plus eight is 24. Okay. Plus one 24. plus one is 26. Sorry, 26, because Lightbringer is a plus one. Okay. And that's with everything, with all the bonuses, that's both attacks, so a total of 26? Yeah, that's so it's 2d6s for the original attacks, 2d6s okay. for the necro uh, the undead, the d8 for superiority, and 2d4s for being lord. Perfect. Um, all right. So 26. <laughs> smashing into that one twice, it is definitely starting to crumble to dust, but it's still on its feet. Uh, I am going to... Does anybody want to move? Uh, okay. I don't think so. In that case, I'll just use a distracting strike in case someone else attacks it, because I don't want to move it. All right, sounds good. And so you're using distracting strike on the southern one. Uh, I will just yep. put a distracting icon on it, which will look like that, we'll say. All cool, right, it you. is distracted. Uh, so, uh, the one to the north, Ashen White number one is going to snarl as you get bigger and is going to first take Moonbeam damage. <laughs> uh, so what's my save for Moonbeam? And, uh, I failed, by the way. Twenty. Holy pulled max. Wow. That's radiant. Okay, it sees um, you smash into the southern one, Carmilla, and as you do, the other one lets out a hiss and prepares to stab you, and then evaporates to nothingness as the moonbeam obliterates it from existence. All right. Uh, Anthea, the bed, or Lyric, it's your turn. Um, 
if Anthea has a plan, Anthea can go ahead. Anthea was just going to try to rinse and repeat. All right, so rinse and repeat. We'll, we'll do that while, <laughs> while, while we're figuring out. All right, let's go. I'm going to throw a firebolt. I said it right. You know what? I'm going to use the red one because it's a firebolt. Let's go. Much better. That's a 19. That's going to be a hit. Roll me damage. Yeah. And so that's plus four on this. So 2d10 plus four. Yeah. Here's hoping for max. Kacha! It is not. Oh, okay. That's going to be eight. Yahoo! With 2d10 plus four? <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. Is that eight yeah, including the plus four? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> So you basically like throw a, a lit Zippo lighter at this thing. And it, uh, it does some damage to it. That's great. Oh, that wasn't. Hmm. And you're going to hear exactly Squish kind of go. Blub, 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 blub. Oh, that's right. You're bigger. All squish. Right. I believe in you. You can get them. Blub, blub, pat, 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 pat. Blub, 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 blub. Oh, you're so oh. squishy. <laughs> That's way better. That's a 24 to hit. That's going to hit. Roll me, roll me squish plus d4. All right. So that would be 2d4 then. Plus my proficiency bonus. So if I can Two. find another... D4s for some reason just always evade me. I'm like, where the hell are they? You'll find them. Table. Walk around barefoot. Yeah, no thanks. I step on enough toys already. Uh, <laughs> that was before be... you had a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Seven points of force damage. Seven points of force damage as this mighty Putu flies through the air and smacks into that one. Fantasmic. Um, all right. So, Anthea, anything else on your turn that you want to do? No, that's everything. Just right. actually, she's just going to like kind of lean into Squish. Not into, but like onto. Yeah, it's like laying on a waterbed. Yeah, exactly. Putu. Oh, that's a good job. Oh. All right. Lyric and or the bed. Mm-hmm. Now I see that bed word. circle of moonbeam. Um, I don't really want to put either of us through that unless you think I can squeeze somehow. You can move through there. Cindery with difficult terrain, basically. So moving through Cindery will cost you 10 feet of movement. Can the bed for the, move for the bed. injury? So you can okay. move through. The bed is going to have rough terrain because it's large. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So cool. you can move the yeah. bed to the other side. It'll okay. cost it 10 feet bed of movement. Has third, okay. So it has additional 20 feet of movement. It's going after the one further, like, to, over to the east. All right. And the is bed. attempting to slam. Wait, All right. What? Give him. <laughs> what? So this bed hovers over Sindri and charges <laughs> this other. <laughs> okay. When's the last time you saw? I know you've jumped on a bed, but when's the last time a bed jumped on you? A couple episodes. <laughs> All I'm right. So happy. Make me an attack roll. Oh god, why can't I roll well? Uh damn it. Um, what is my? Oh, don't forget that it has disadvantage on its first attack. Oh yeah, okay. So, honestly, it can't get worse much. It can get worse. I lied. It could have. Okay. Um, Good. But my spell attack modifier. My spell attack modifier. That is plus seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going. Can I use my determination? On your bed, sure. To make it fourteen. I don't know if that'll actually hit, but I'm going to try. A fourteen is not going to hit. Uh, the bed okay, is going to get too tangled up in some of the over gears and is going to miss. It only got okay. one shot. Shucks. Okay. What a pity. That's okay. I have a secondary. I, I have my own thing I can do. So Lyric's okay. going to move forward then. Um, move up next to Zindri. And I guess if I sent it off to do something, I will, I think... Uh, slap Sindri with some Bardic Inspiration, because it can do that in the same turn that I command the bed. And then I would like to Vicious Mockery the one that the bed missed. 
Okay. Overall, on the, What's mine? Right there. What? I got an 18 um, on my. I got a base 18. Crusty. Oh, base 18. Base 18. Oh, well, my spell save DC is 15, so I'm pretty sure you're fine. Unless you use so, silvery barbs. I don't have that. Oh, okay. Well, then don't can't, don't use it. I I'm specifically not taking that. It's too tempting. Herb. Eh, I got other things, but I tried. Vicious mockery failed. Swing and a miss and a woof. A wolf. You used one of the jokes I used for Lyric a couple of games ago, and it just didn't land. Wamp wamp. Wamp wamp. It's all my fault. She tried. All right. Chad has just bought you determination back. And anybody else? Are you doing anything else? I believe that is my turn. So all I've right. given Bardic. I have sent the bed after things. And yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. So Ashen White number two that is inside of the moonbeam is going to roll a save and that's going to be a four. <laughs> Christine, please uh, punish me in the name of the moon. Uh, it's going to be 13 radiant. Another one bites the dust or becomes the dust as the moonbeam of, uh, eliminates its last eight hit points and it sizzles away. However, that is not enough to, uh, well, Anvil White, or Anvil White, Ashen White number three is not in the moonbeam and leers at the bed and takes two swings at it with its necrotic shards. And that is going to be uh, an 18 and a 25. Those will both hit. Those are higher than 16. Uh, that is going to be a, uh, it's going to take a combined total of 12 points of necrotic damage. Ha! It still has 12 hit points. <laughs> it's gonna, it, it's hacking at the bed. It's hacking at the bed. All right, Alessandra, it's your turn. Uh, I'm gonna move the moonbeam. This, yeah, I've got 60 foot of movement, so I'm, I'm quite certain I can do that without hitting anybody. All right. Um, so yeah. Does that take an action? Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm, I don't need to move anywhere. I don't need to do anything more. I'm just going to kind of like mentally move the moonbeam and just wait for it to kill this one. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And I guess just taking your defensive stance. Yes. Might as well in case it for some reason comes running all the way over here, but. Perfect. All right. Sindri, it's your turn. Oh, it'd be really funny if I did it. So I'm going to go for it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go running over there. Uh, and I'm going to jump off the bed and spring for a, like a like a, just a flying sidekick because it's like, all right. I'll give you it. advantage on that because it's funny as hell. Give it to me. Yeah. And memory of bardic inspiration. Uh, so that's a 19 on the die. Oh, so uh, yeah. Close. But I will use my bardic inspiration so I can make it explode. Okay, it's uh, gonna make a the, save. The juice that makes you. The juice uh, that makes I rolled you a nat one on my save. Roll double. All right, it's gonna take double damage from your bardic. So seven. Seven, so fourteen points of damage from the explosion. Okay, what I'm gonna so, so when you when you use the bardic, does it it, it shows up as like like a clap or something, right, or a music note? Yeah, it's just like little music notes. Okay, uh, I'm gonna yeah. say that Cindery is going to like jump kick this music note into its face like a JoJo stand. <laughs> just because it's a soccer a kick, like a really sick. No, like it's like floating in the air. And he's like. Oh, no. <laughs> And it's like, it's going to sound like slamming your head on a piano when it hits. Just, <laughs> And seven points of magical bludgeoning damage for my fit. So, 21 All points right. damage that hit. Uh, that is fantastic. Good. So, uh, yeah, 21 from a kick is pretty good. This thing is on its feet still. Good what do you do? More attacks. Uh, so, I'm going to do another attack, uh, which is a 19 to hit. Hit. And then nine points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then Floria blows to finish it off for dramatic. All right. Actually, I don't know if that... Mm, it's probably not worth it. Uh, so I'm just using a single martial arts attack and okay. see if I can... Uh, and that's uh, 16 to hit. 16 to hit is going to hit. Roll me damage. All right. Yata. And that's another eight points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Okay. This so... thing is starting to crumble to dust, but is still... Still technically on its feet. Down and then up through the jaw. 
just... <laughs> All right, top of the initiative, it is Carmilla. God, this thing's still alive? It's still um, alive, yeah, not not very much. I, I think she's going to start walking towards it um, and sort of somewhat unthinkingly is just going to... Um, uh, as she walks forward, she's kind of just pissed off and maybe being big has like made her kind of ragey. It's um, big, she's big girl, big anger. forward and grab this thing by its face and just be like, just die already. Um, and somewhat unknowingly, because I took a feat, uh, is going to cast Inflict Wounds. Oh! Ooh, get him. Uh, but I have to make a, t a spell attack, so we'll yeah. see if that if, <laughs> if that actually happens. But fingers crossed, guys. Um. Hey uh, Ooh, that's an 18 or a 19 on the die. That'll um, hit. Huzzah. Okay. All right, roll uh, me so your necrotic do damage. 3d10. Yeah. It's so good. I'm, I'm hoping that they don't have like a lot of minimizing to necrotic or like immune. <laughs> They're not immune. That would make sense. Oh, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, it's going to be 17. That's still pretty good. Um, as you pick it up, you're going to see that the necrotic energy is blowing out of you it is going to start to bite into it and parts of it are going to begin to flack away uh, as you are holding it. But as you are pumping necrotic energy, you're going to see its eyes and the veins that run through its its frame are going to glow in retaliation, as if it's trying to struggle with its own internal hate and strife against the just sheer necrotic energy you're pumping into it. Uh, I think I'm going to action surge and Perfect. hit it a couple times. I want you to do this. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not good at all. Um, uh, okay, one of those is going to be a 14, which I okay. don't think will hit. It will not. But I you will have... use my determination on that one. Okay. Because the other one's going to be a 13. So the 14 will become a 17. Okay. That will hit for sure. Roll me damage. Okay. Uh, so awesome. D4, so D6, D6. D6, D4. And I'll use a superiority die. To get that extra sweet, sweet damage. Yep. Uh, that's going to be 10, 17, 21. How many? 21. How do you do it? <laughs> uh, grabs this thing. Why won't you die? And doesn't quite go. I said die. <laughs> and just like weasel around the mulberry bush, bop this thing. All right. And it is going to crumble to broken stone and dust at your feet. Is everything all right in there? It is now, I think. Yeah, we got a big hand on it. <laughs> Are you on the ground? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just looking up at you. I was going to reach move. a giant hand down to help you up. Thanks. No, that worked. That actually be more you up fully. <laughs> Set you back on your Far feet. <laughs> better than I thought it would. What's Ella doing? Uh, just moving the moonbeam away from everybody. Uh, but uh, she'll leave it to run out. It only lasts up to a minute. Um, but just in case something else suddenly pops it into existence in the next like few seconds. Okay. Uh, if you're going further down, I will get this machinery working. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, good job. I'm glad I'm not those guys. Me too. And with that, Hildak will begin working on the machines, trying to get the conveyor belt system working, and or at least the, the, the tram, the belt conveyor. Um, but I also think that's a great place for us to take a quick break. So, hey folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick bio break.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is the part of the program where I'm going to super briefly talk to the chat uh, because we got a little bit more game we need to do, and I want to get a jump on that. But I want to remind you that this Friday, Friday, it's Monday. Friday comes in just four more days, give or take. And on Friday, we are doing Extra Life. So you definitely want to tune in for that. We've got people coming from all sorts of other channels. Uh, we've got all the Dork Tales team coming to play, or at least most of us. And we've got some fantastic games to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. I would love to see you there. So please join us. Um, also, uh, the how I did the uh, greatest actual play ever, also known as Oops All Kellys, uh, is going to be uploaded to Patreon uh, tomorrow morning. So if you are not on our Patreon at the $5 tier or higher, you can see how that was done. Uh, and uh, it's it's real dumb and real obvious once you see it, but I like the mystique. Um, uh, so go and check that out. And uh, yeah, it will be great to have you on the Patreon because I love getting those numbers up. And we're only like, I think we're like 30 people away right now from Christine running her game. Uh, which would be fantastic. And a quick reminder that I'm already starting to work on some of the stuff for Descent into Avernus, which is going to be... It's going to be like, what if D&D &D was edited by Heavy Metal Magazine from the sound of it? Like, Cal's really going to... It's going to be stupid. Like, in a good way. I've got, like... So instead how D&D &D should be. It's uh -huh. kind of, right? So I'm already putting the soundtrack together, and instead of, like, you know, orchestral music, the fight music is Heavy Metal. Like every time it's like, it's heavy metal that I have. So it's, it's really great. Um, besides that, uh, please join me on Wednesday for, um, world building Wednesday, which is a Twitch feature that I run from noon to three on Wednesday. Uh, this week, I have no idea what I'm going to be designing. I might be doing some, some map building with y'all. Um, but pretty soon I, I have some really big stuff I got to start working on. So, uh, please join me. We're going to hang out. It's a co-working stream that runs from, uh, noon Pacific until three Pacific, uh, every Wednesday here on Twitch. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, come over to Twitch. It's, you know, it's not hard. Uh, anybody else have anything they need to express before we head back into game? All right. That was and easy. Just expressing in general. I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate all of you. Correct. I, I love you, Amy. I love, I love you too, Krista. You guys are great. You guys are some of like the best people on the planet. And I'm playing yeah. games with you. Isn't it, you know, like, I think that one of the best things about Dork Tales is that like, just the amount of like, love that like we all have for each other we like nobody less than tolerates anybody else in dork tales <laughs> it's, it's a nice change uh you, you really feel that in the energy you know um i'm very excited uh chris uh oh and the other thing uh that i was going to say is uh next week uh we are going to be recovering from extra life so there's no fandelver on monday i'm going to be sleeping because we will have just ran 14 games. Um, and uh, this weekend, I almost got away with it, but I'm going to have to run a game after all on Sunday. So please join me for that. I have no idea what it's going to be. Um, probably D&D &D of some type. Uh -huh. It's a good cast. It's a great cast. Um, I will tell you more about that soon, though. Uh, so... but I'm going to have something awful happen to you, so let's hop back in a game. Sound good? Wait, what? <laughs> what, what? All right. Uh, Hello and welcome back to Fandelver and Below, the Shattered Obelisk, here on Dork Tales. In the wake of your battle with the Ash Whites, you can hear the sound of Hjoldak, Hjoldak, I keep saying his name wrong, Hjoldak Hollowhelm, working on the tram system that once ferried buckets in and out of the lower levels of the mine. As he continues to work around, hammering and trying to get the system back up and running, you can see the conveyor belt mechanism is old and decrepit. However, anybody else who's looking at this, can I please get you to make me an intelligence and investigation role? And particularly, Anthea probably would be looking at this extra close. Yeah. Lyric sure is looking at this too. All right, sounds good. Cedric got 19 this time? Nice. Okay. Now I need to know, are you looking at the mechanism or are you kind of searching yeah. around the room? I, uh, I'm investigating the room. I'm not, I don't really care about the mechanism. Okay, can you roll me a d4? Yeah. Lyric got a 16 to investigate the mechanism. 
So, Lyric, as you are looking around and investigating the mechanism, and uh, what did you get, Anthea? A 14. Perfect. You are going to see that the conveyor belt has a, n- a number of broken mechanisms that he is able to start working back into place immediately. But after about a minute of doing that, he's going to pick up a long length of crystal that kind of, it looks dull. But in the way that you've seen other crystals in this area, or even the crystals that are comprising what Hull Jack kind of looks like, like parts of his body, there should be some type of luminescence inside of here. Both of you are proficient in Arcana? Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Looking at that, you can see that appears to be some type of powering crystal. And you think, you know, that that type of crystal is used to power all sorts of arcane mechanisms and can be recharged by touching it and expending a spell slot of first level or higher. Huh. I've got a bit of a problem. This, I don't have any way to recharge it. Oh, I think I can help with that a little bit. Yeah, there. go for it. Reach out. Um, <sighs> just needs to be recharged, right? I. it should be able okay. to. And as you say that, you're going to hear as Carmilla shrinks back to normal size and so does Squish. Oh, you were so... Wait, wait, before... She's going to give Squish one hug before it goes back to normal. Squish. Oh, so Squish. Oh, no. And she'll probably just land up on her face as he shrinks faster than she expected. Oh, no. We can probably make that happen again. It's not a one-time thing. Oh. It just doesn't stay. That would be so fun, just as a treat. Sure. M- maybe in the next battle. Nice. Um, and Lyric's gonna just hold one of these crystals and we'll spend... You said it was first level spell slot? First please? level or higher, yeah. Beauty. We're gonna just spend the first level spell slot. Sounds good. Uh, it will begin to glow brilliantly with blue light. Yes, just, that should do it. it. Just needs a bit of oomph. Good job. Uh, thank you. I don't have that type of oomph. But uh, I should be able to get this up and running. Give me maybe five minutes. Although you, short one, halfling. Interesting. Tim, Tim, oh. I see you have tools on your belt. You give me yes, hands. Yes, many. Uh, sure. All right. Chain threading here is broken. Needs to be replaced. Do you have any way of welding these two things together? Oh, yeah, that's easy. All right. You make chain work, I will feed it through central dyes. Mm hmm. Gotcha. All right. So you'll begin working that. Sindri, as you're walking around, you're keeping an eye out, and you're going to see that the Duragar that were here before, the mindless Ash Whites, were working at these anvils. You can see that there are various weapons and armor pieces scattered about the forge. Most of them are incomplete, useless. Bits of, uh, bits of like half-made ring mail or the, the pommel of a sword. But lying amidst the wreckage there, you are going to see two things that are going to catch your eye. One, a delicate set of bracers made out of silver. Down their center, you see an intricate arrowhead worked into the motif. Curious. And nearby, you will also see a gold-tipped javelin that glows slightly when you touch it. Uh, interesting. Uh, Lyric? The Sindri will, like, hold them, like, hmm? hold up the javelin. Does this... Is this magic? Is it, well, is it magic? Or is it just nice? 
Mm, let me take a look, I suppose. Mirk will come over and, and take a look at it. Okay. Would this be an arcana or a... I, I usually use arcana in my games. Detect magic or identify, of course, will give you all of the properties, but... Yeah, don't really know that guy. So we will do an arcana check and see if it at least looks kind of magical. Okay, go ahead and give me... Aha, that will be a 21. You are very certain that the bracers are bracers of archery. Hmm. And that javelin sure does look like the type of javelins of lightning that you saw that were stocked there in the, um, oh, what was the name of that store in Neverwinter? Um, Stevedore Emporium? There were a bunch of those stacked along the wall. So, uh, yes, they're definitely magical. Um, don't recall exactly what they do, but I think this one is good for archery. And I think this one, um, well, let's just say it's a little shocking. Oh, cool. Uh, Alessandra, Carmilla? So out of character, uh, just to let you know, uh, Bracers of Archery give you a plus two damage on any uh, archery related damage per hit. Does the light cross? Uh, I don't. It includes crossbows. Uh. Y'all too. I, I occasionally will use a longbow, but not very often. Yeah, I rarely use it because I'm everything I mean, for me is designed to be in close. I realize my light crossbow damage is actually really not very good. Especially think, compared to the 2d10 for the Firebolt. I think realistically, like out of character, Carmilla probably is the most likely to... Unless Lyric, unless you want it for... Does it count for thrown weapons? It does not. It just does ranged no. weapons of the type of, uh, of longbow, shortbows, and technically not... But it's anything archery related, basically. Okay. But it also gives you proficiency with longbows and shortbows. Oh. Okay. In, in that case, be... oh, there, yeah. Do you want that then? Yeah, because that would actually be super good for me because I'm just not proficient in longbows or shortbows. The only the oh, one. Oh, middle of battle, just like toss you a bow, be like, go, bitch, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, use my. Oh, too bad it's not a monk weapon because it'd be fucking sick, but like. <laughs> As is, I still get two attacks at plus five. Like, sure. Uh, oh. Yeah. So, Sindri will uh, slap those on. And does anyone have an extra bow kicking around? Sindri will, like, look around. The... I, I actually might. One second. <laughs> um, while you're doing that, I will just quickly let you know that the Javelin of Lightning is a magic weapon. Uh, it does not require attunement. Um, when you hurl it and speak its command word, it transforms into a bolt of lightning, forming a five foot uh, long wide uh, five foot line that extends out from you to a target within 120 feet. Each creature in that line, excluding you and the target, uh, must make a DC 13 saving throw, taking 46 lightning on a save, on a failed save, that is, half as much. Um, the lightning bolt turns back into a javelin when it reaches the target. Uh, make a ranged attack against that target on a hit. Uh, they take javelin plus 46. Uh, it can't be used again till next dawn. In the meanwhile, it's still a magic javelin. Very cool. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I I have a magic mace already. Um, so I don't know. It, that feels very thematic for an avenging paladin. So I would say that that should totally if, go to Ella. If nobody else wants it, then I will hold on to it for just the purposes of using it. We exactly. can always pass it back and forth too, right? If it's not yeah. attunement. Yeah, it's not attunement. Exactly. The bracers are. Yeah. That's actually really Yeah, I definitely idea. am mainly a longsword, but I do not mind at all using thrown stuff when needed. Well, yeah, and like I know I've, that's why I've pulled my bow out a couple of times where it's like, this is way too far away and I'm not going to get there and I need to do something. So might as well have it. <laughs> All right. So, um, as you are looking over that thing, um, can I get Anthea? Can you make me a um, a proficiency roll with your toolkit? Yes. I have multiple toolkits. 
Is this uh, so Tinker's this Tools? Tinker's Tools, please. All right. Let's go. Let's and real go. quick, while you're doing that. That can't be a one because I'm a halfling. Again? Yeah, actually. It's four tonight. Not this That's dice. Awesome. Not this. I, oh my god. I, I thought it was only three, but yes. That's great. Whoa, that's a 19. Um, a 19? Yeah, so proficiency would be 22. All right, there's going to be a... <laughs> as the conveyor bucket system begins clicking and moving back through the room. As that occurs, Hildak will point over and go, there's a stapled stool over there. Bring it over here. You can use oh, it. Yes, sir. You can use it to ride the buckets. Wow. She'll stand awestruck for a second. Okay. Tick, 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 and bring it over. This will get you down to the lower levels. From there, I can show you the way. Go first. Uh, Are you all ready you. to take the uh, to take the tram? Let's go. Yeah, I prefer to not go first this time, though. Every time I go first, it's something bad waiting for us. I sort of think that might be the case regardless of who goes first, just as a rule. Send me the cart first. Very small and very weak. So basically what She's this playing is... playing it up for sure. <laughs> If you have ever been to, say, like a dry cleaners, and you know how they have those mechanical, like, you can cause the vroom ah. of all the clothes to come by? So this is like an overhanging bucket system that comes down to empty um, into this side, uh, basically so that they can pull debris out of the lower tunnels. Uh, as this is going, and you want to ride the buckets, uh, and this is why I think this module is really great, because it gives you ride the bucket rolls. Um, you will need to make an acrobatics check because these are about 20 feet in the air that you're climbing onto to ride the bucket. Like an intense ski lift. It's like an, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the fuck it buckets. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Ride the bucket roll. Ride the bucket roll. Everybody make me a ride the bucket roll. What is it? Uh, it's a uh, acrobatics roll. Oh, that's what you said. You totally I, said that. I and totally my brain said just it. died. I'm so sorry. Totally fine. Okay. That'd be in oh, that no. one, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, so 14. climbing up. How much? Acrobatics, huh? 14. Uh, would you like to spend wow. determination? Sure. Let's do that, because I don't have any decks that I add to this. 15. Okay. 15. 16. 16. Okay. Uh, are you are you spending any of yours, um, Amy? Can I give myself bardic inspiration before we go down? said every bard ever um <laughs> i've never thought really about it before so uh sure i i think you can um so okay. uh carmilla you're going to leap up and grab onto it and are going to slip uh and instead are going to suffer six points of bludgeoning damage as you uh as you slip oh. off of one of the buckets and crash to the floor are you all right do you need uh, glue i could make glue for your hand I just I had gotten used to having the big hands and the big height so I I, it's okay I will try again I'm sure I will be okay. fine uh, Lyric leaping up you rolled a 14 yeah so and you said it was okay to use my bardic so that okay. add another no I said I, did, I got a 12 so add another 5 to that okay then you are going to be able to hold on just fine uh, is the bed going to be able to try <laughs> to float flies. down so it has a 30 feet float speed. Okay. Uh, so I need to know who, so Sindri jumped first, followed by Alessandra, I believe, and Thea, then you. I have a question. I, yes. Can I walk up the wall and across the ceiling and lower myself into a bucket? <laughs> Yes, you may make the acrobatics roll with advantage by, by doing the stupidest thing possible. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was pretty smart. It's 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 smart and stupid at the same time. Uh, acrobatics. Ooh, okay, not as good at that. Uh, 
13. What does 16 do it? I think I have determination. Bing, you do, and it did. Yay. Yay. All right. So let me just update. So, uh, so Sindri and Lyric are the only characters that have determination right now. There we go. All right. So, uh, lowering yourself in, you will have no problem riding the train. Holdak, Hildak will take a look at you and say, uh, I'll be along in a minute. Stupid small legs. And is going to jump up and attempt to get in several times. I feel you. All right. Can I try to reach an arm down and give him the help? All right, sure. So I've just noticed, I double checked my rules for Bardic Inspiration. I cannot inspire myself. I can only inspire others. So in this case, I. Do you want to spend I your determination? Plus five to give it to somebody that give that dice roll to somebody else and use my determination instead. Sure. Okay. I don't know All who right. needed it. But. There you go. All right, and with that, uh, Hildak needed it actually. So between that and. Um, and Carmilla's aid, uh, you are going to be able to get your friendly Durgar Ashwhite up into the cart. There is going to be a swoop of momentum as this bucket system begins carrying you down, down, down into the depths. And as it does so, just one moment, please. Uh, It moves at a steady, quickened pace. And the bed is going to be a bit far behind. And as... Are we going by a river? uh, You're not going down, down by the river, but there is a stagnant lake in here, which is almost the same thing. All right. The bucket system continues to propel you down, swinging around the corner with a... And then you go through a series of tunnels, descending deeper and deeper into this, into the mines down beneath the actual fortress. In here, you see stacks of crates filling a chamber. Some are half covered by dusty tarps that barely hide the ore within, while others are nailed shut. The creak of metal echoes from a conveyor of buckets that you ride that runs from the floor of this cavern and back up through a hole in the ceiling, a complete loop that will take you back up to the main floor. A set of minecart tracks pass through the northwest end of the cavern, and then you notice at the north a massive conical drill. Suddenly, its insides roar alight with blazing fire as you enter the room, and it charges you with a piercing screech. And I'm gonna spend a drama bomb. As this thing roars to life, it is going to let out a shriek and is going to slam itself into the bucket pulley system which is going to pitch all of you to the ground. I need an acrobatics roll from everyone. Nar. Well, Hildak failed. 15. 15, you are fine. Oh, 17, sorry. 17, you are even finer. I know. Natural 20. (laughs) Okay. No, no. (laughs) What, What happened? Lyric, no. Lyric rolled in that one. All right, Lyric, you are going to tumble tumble to the ground. I rolled really bad for damage. You are going to take 11 points of bludgeoning damage as you are hurled to the ground and are going to be prone. Um, All right, did anybody else get lower than a 15? Yes. Okay, so both of you, uh, oh God. and Thea, you're going to take 11 points, and uh, Carmilla, you're going to take 8 points of bludgeoning damage as you are all pitched to the ground, uh, and Hildok is going to take 9 points of bludgeoning damage as he is hurled to the ground as well, as this rips through the air above you. I need an initiative roll. Okay, okay Hildok got a 4, good for him, that's a 5 overall, and let's roll for the Infernal Augur which rolled a three. I'm spending a hurt them more. I want to attack sooner than that. 
A, a, a four. That's very sarcastic, Dice. All right, so the fiendish auger is going to have an initiative four. Well, that's great for me. Um, all right, into initiative. I am looking at this. Uh, so, starting here, I'm seeing that I have Lyric with a 21, mm-hmm. followed by Lady Alice, no, nope, uh, followed by Carmilla, followed by Alessandra, followed by, where did Sindri roll? Yeah, same as me. Same as you? Okay. Don't mind. So Sindri, Ella, Anthea, Hyldak, and then the Augur. All right, as you slam to the floor, Lyric, it is your turn. You are prone, a little bit dazed, and probably a little bit pissed off. It is your turn. Yeah, that's that's very accurate. Um, I would like to cast Invisibility on myself using my Legacy of Mel Bold creature so I don't use a spell slot. Perfect. So I'm just invisible. Um, if the bed has come down, then it will attempt to slam attack this thing because it's, it's just a bed. It's not, like, smart. All right, sounds good oh, to it's me. Gonna adjust with thing i can't move it that's fine the but bed is going to attacking. heroically burst through the opening as it pushes <laughs> through all of this like grinding metal and is going to heroically slam into this or it will um, attempt to anyway it will attempt to go ahead and make me an attack roll okay uh oh let's say 15. A 15 is enough to hit. Roll me damage. Wow. Okay. It's very large. That's true. That's true. Uh, and the damage is going to be... Let's see, our proficiency bonus is plus three at this point, right? So seven force damage. Okay. It is going to slam into it for seven points of force damage. And... As it does that, um, this immense drill is going to spend a hurt the more to make a reaction. And right. does a... What is its AC? Its AC would be 16. I rolled exactly a 16. Uh, so uh, it is going to slam into it for a total of... Uh, this thing is a bed. Uh, so it is an object, uh, which means this thing... Point. Oh, sorry? It has 12 hit points left. Cool. It does 42 points of damage to the bed. Yeah. So it The bed splinters. heroically bursts through, and this auger lurches up, slams its drill, and as it spins its drill through the frame, it ignites with infernal flame. Okay. Destroying That's Bedward. <gasps> no, Bedford! Not Bedward! <laughs> Is it Bedford or Bedward? Uh, either Bedford Bedford for sure. Bedward? Bedward. Oh, Natasha Bedingfield. <laughs> Bedhelms. All right, sounds good. All right. Oh that's, just, that's just their favorite, uh, Their fa his favorite uh, artist is Natasha Bedingfield. Benjamin. Benjamin? Holy sheet. All right. Uh, Lyric, are you doing any movement? Uh, yeah, so I'm invisible. Um, I would like to spend, I guess it's half my movement to stand up and get out of the line of fire. We're going I'm... to get out of the way. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you have 15 feet of movement that you can still make. Yeah, I think I'm heading down south past Alessandra. I okay, think. so heading to the lower corner of the cavern, you can move uh, down on the other side of Alessandra without a problem. Uh, all right, Carmilla or Sindri, what do you do? Sindri, you got something you want to do? Uh, I'm going to try and punch this. Is it so it's just like, mm, so I'm on the ground, uh, mm -hmm. but I landed on my feet. So you had on your feet because yep, you're a monk. I'm going to try and get around to the opposite side from the, the pointy bit. OK. Uh, and let me just pull my 
10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, and I'm just going to start uh, laying into it, uh, dealing acid damage. Okay. Uh, Unexpected, but good. Yeah. I'm like, well, I can try to rip it open with my bare hands, but I can also just like punch it with acid. So maybe that's helpful. Um, hard to tell. Or I could just try and hit it with magic damage. I think I'll just hit it with magic damage. I'm like, Sounds good. Uh, what do I do? Giant drill. Little, little monk hands. Uh, That's the drill that pierces the heavens. Let's go. Two attacks. Uh, there is a an 18 and hit. a 25. They're definitely a hit. Yeah. Uh, so that is 11 points of damage and then 10 points of damage and then Flurry of Blows. Okay. Uh, fuck. Um, that is a 15 to hit. Uh, 15 to hit is a hit. All right. And so that is going to be eight points of damage. And then I'm going to spend my determination to make it 16 to hit. All right. That's going to be another hit. Roll me your, uh, give me the damage from your flurry of blows together, please. Uh, what did I say before? I, I, I didn't hear you actually, because I was adjusting your determination. So, uh, shit. Fuck. Goddamn. Uh, so this, the first, the second one was 11. Okay. And I think the one before it was eight. That sounds that sounds legit to me. Monk things. Hashtag just monk things. Okay, so there we go. That seems about right. Um, all right. Slamming into it over and over again with your acid fists. Uh, you are going to see the machinery begin to bend and burn as it ignites parts of the metal are beginning to split. Infernal flame is ripping out through the metal. Be careful. Help. That thing is very vicious. You'll hear Hildak say as he tries to right himself. Um, is this yours? It used to just be an auger. Not this infernal piece of shit. All right, Carmel, you're up. Does there look like, like, is there any way to get inside? Like, is there a cab? There is a, that would be a great question. Um, it is. <laughs> if there is, like, if it doesn't say anything, that's fine. I'll just It does it. not say anything. Hold Try on, let me just double check. It. Let me just double check its bestiary entry. Because <laughs> this thing is so dumb and I love it. <laughs> um, fiendish auger. Um, oh no, there is a, there is a seat from the looks of it. Fueled by fervent aggression of the evil spirit within, it rapidly churns through solid rock, or through solid rock, that is. Uh, so it looks like there is some type of seat at the back. Yeah. Okay. I kind of want to try to get in it. <laughs> okay. Uh, you may attempt to. Now, I need to know, cool. understand, I, I need to ask you a very important question. Do you have pilot land vehicles, by chance? Uh, I sure don't. Okay. So, uh, what you can do can I is... I my scroll of pedigree so it knows I'm important. Oh, okay. Good, good. That sounds great. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it only respects working men and women and, and thems. Oh, so, that's uh... Fair, yeah. I appreciate okay. that about it. Yeah. It's a, it's, you know, it's unionized, right? Uh, but yeah, you can, <laughs> you can totally try to get in the back if you'd like. Perfect. Okay, so uh, uh, make me a grapple roll to try to ride it. Fantastic. So I this is a, a this is an athletics check versus athletics. my athletics. Uh, I I if you get above a ten. Oh, I might oh. have. Uh, let me just double check. I think let I have just... athletics. Yeah. So plus yeah, fourteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, so you are going to be able to straddle the seat and hop in. Uh, it has a bunch of gears that are going. <laughs> of their own volition. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take my long sword. I, these are just gonna be attacks. This is for color. Uh, she's gonna take her short sword and jam it into the me mechanism and then her long sword and jam it into the mechanism. Okay, make me two attacks. Okay. Uh, the short sword attack. You know what? I will give a... you advantage on these because this is dumb. Ooh, okay. <laughs> You're basically um, finding its weak spot. 
I'm trying. Uh, that's a 17 with a short sword. That'll hit. And an 18 with the long sword. Those are two hits. So you're going to jam, and it's uh, going to let out a horrible squeal. Cool. Uh, and there's... How far away is that? Oh, no, never mind. That doesn't help me. Um, okay, I'm going to use a, a superiority dice on one of those. Okay. Um, so that's a D6 and a D8. Um, so a D8 for the damage, a D8 for the superiority, and a D6 for the short sword. Uh, so that, oh, and oh, I'm only using it one-handed, so that's still just a one. Um, so that's a six, seven, plus eight is 15. So 15 damage total. Okay. And I'm going to give it distracting strike, so it will be uh, whoever attacks it next will have advantage. Perfect. Uh, well, that's perfect timing, because as you are riding it going, like, try jamming into its gears, Alessandra, you are up. Your first attack has advantage. All right. Well, I'm kind of thinking this is mechanical. It is we mechanical, but it looks like it's, it is definitely a construct of some type, but it looks like it's being fueled by dark magic. Still probably a construct. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking that Javelin should get thrown at it. If you don't want to get close, that could work. So maybe that would have... Yeah. I kind of feel like that might be a good, good attempt. Just remember, if you wish to smite, you can't smite through a ranged weapon. This is true. Maybe I should just jump on it with Carmilla. Follow her, her example. Put a hand out. She's shown me the way. <laughs> Those who slay together stay together. <laughs> um, and yeah, sure. I'll, I'll jump on it and hit it a couple times with my silver magic longsword. Okay. Can you go ahead and make me an athletics check to grapple it? Oh, God. Uh, sure. I, I rolled like a... Like a 14, so good luck. Oh, a 15. Uh, that is a 16. Okay, of course it is. All right, so uh, that is not me disbelieving you. That is my luck tonight is awful. <laughs> that was me rolling a 12 and adding four, so thank you for the gauntlets of Ogre Strength. <laughs> right, all right. So reaching up, you're going to be able to uh, be pulled up onto its chassis. Okay. Onto its seat and... Uh, it has its, not belly, but I guess it has its gears exposed. Do you go ahead and ro roll me uh, at your attacks with advantage? Both or the first one? Uh, both, because Carmilla has helped you up and is showing you the way. Okay. Uh, what do I add to my attacks? One second. Uh, it's going to be that. So that is a 19. Hit. And that is a 27. Okay, those are both hits. Roll me damage. Okay. And so for initiative, just so you know, Anthea's on deck next, followed by Huldak and then the Augur. Okay. I think I will, in fact, Divine Smite on one of okay. these. Uh, so that is two, eight. Okay, so spending one Smite. Sounds good. Uh, okay, so that's 10 radiant damage. Okay. Uh, 22 regular damage across the two attacks. 22 regular damage across those two attacks. Okay, uh, one minute. I'm going to spend a Hurt the More to stay up. Um, you are going to jam into its gears, and you're going to... You know what really grinds its gears? You. Uh, and your girlfriend. Um, so. Right. Okay. It is still up. I'm going to spend. Oh, spend another Hurt the More to regenerate some hit points. Okay. okay. Um, you are going to slam into it, repeatedly damaging it. Uh -huh. um, and as it starts to break apart, you're going to hear this <laughs> scream come from its engine as its infernal energies are holding it together by sheer spite and evil. I don't like 
like that. that All right. That's, that's kind of lame. Um, yeah, I'm guessing my defensive stance will not help me on top of this. It will not help you when you ride something. <laughs> <laughs> good, good call, good call. Um, all right, so that's going to be your turn unless you want to jump off. Uh, and Thea, it's your turn. Okay, so I do my best work from afar. So we're going to go move this way, move this way, disengage, move this okay. way. All right, so you're using your action to disengage? <laughs> yes, but I still okay. have my bonus action. All right, sounds good. Uh, now, are you are you having uh, Squish disengage as well? Oh, I see. I always figured he just kind of rides my shoulder. He's technically his own creature. Oh. No, Squish can do, do the do. You stay right there. All right, Squish will stay there. You stay there, buddy. Because he's going to attack. All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right, so you have your bonus action? He is my bonus action. Oh, okay. I command him to attack. Okay, so you're going to disengage and he's going to attack. Yes. Go ahead and make me an attack yes. roll. Okay. Kacha! That's a 16. Uh, 16 is going to be a hit. Roll me damage. Oh! Kacha! Six points of force damage. Nice. This thing is going and to start petite. to shake as bits of. Um, bits of metal begin flying out, pinging off of the walls. And as that occurs, uh, all right, are you doing anything else on your turn? No. Okay, uh, Hildak is going to disengage and rush up and around the corner, yelling, it's going to blow! And uh, the auger is going to take its turn because I wish to have a turn. Uh, I'm going, it's not very smart. It's very angry. Uh, so uh, it's going to try to shake both of you off. Both of you make me an acrobat or an athletics or acrobatics roll. Okay, that is going to be a 22 to shake you. 23. <laughs> Actually, sorry, 26. It was acro acrobatic, or it was athletics, not just strength. <laughs> okay. And Alessandra. Would anybody like to buy me determination? <laughs> I'm very close. <laughs> I'm at 20. Um, uh, no. <laughs> so that plus three would be really helpful. <laughs> All right. Three, oh, guys, two. Well, oh, damn it. <laughs> Someone just did. Thank you, Random. Random, you're the best. Okay, so you are both going to hold on. Uh, all right, so it is instead. Uh, I'm gonna roll a. Uh, I'm gonna roll a d d6 on a one, two, or three. It goes after Sindri. On a four, five, six, it goes after Anthea. I, I feel like it was a moment of like, uh, because um, Carmilla's swords are stuck in. She like grabs the long sword as she starts to fall, and then Ella starts to go, and she reaches, grabs her, and then pulls her in like really, really close, and they're like face to face, and just have a like freeze moment. Oh, is this one of those, like, like again. pull in before you swing on the rope type moments? Exactly. <laughs> All right, Cinder, you may make an opportunity attack as it charges toward Anthea. All right, let's go. Uh, 17. A 17 is going to be a hit. And then another uh, nine points of damage. You know what? Uh, I'm going to spend my hurt the more for, no. for for the bonus action. Uh, so <laughs> you are going to slam into it as the two riders on top hold on for dear life. It is going to plunge forward toward Anthea and uh, is going to explode at the end of its turn. But that hurt the more is going to keep me alive until then. Anthea. Oh, no. Uh, Anthea, it's going to charge you. And mm -hmm. I just hit you with a nat 20. Okay, that's fair. Um, okay, so uh, it is going to deal. Uh, as Anthea dodges around the corner, it is going to... Oh, God. That's just, you're, you're very lucky. Um, so that's <laughs> going to be... 21 points of piercing damage. Okay. And then one, seven, 
one. Okay, that could have been way worse. 12 points of fire damage. And Okay, so that's and, uh, 21, 12 is 33 altogether? Yes. For now? And unfortunately, it could not move a full 10 feet to hit you. So, I don't think it could anyway, so hold on to be... Nope, it only moved five feet to hit you. So, it does not deal its extra damage. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, which is real lucky for you. Um, as Sindri smashes into it, it's going to drill you. Um, you need to make me a strength save. Oh, pardon me, actually, okay. no, you don't. Only It's only if it rushes you. Um, but as it... As it takes that last damage, it's going to start to shake apart, and I need everybody here to make me a con save as it explodes in an intense burst of heat. Okay. Uh, and Thea, the chat has redeemed to something good happens for you specifically, so you can roll with oh. advantage. Oh, thanks, everyone. Oh, you guys are so nice. Oh, Griffin, thank you. A con save, okay, huh? Okay, sorry, let me roll. Yeah. All right, let's go. I don't go. have partial cover or anything where I am, do I? Nope, you didn't. You you just ran to the south. Uh, however, I will say it's only on creatures in a 30-foot sphere radiating from itself, wow. which is only the entire cast, except for Hildak. Only everyone. Only everyone. I got okay. a 24. I got a 19 on the dice. Okay, and so I you'll only take half see. damage. Uh, oh, so I'm, I'm, down, but that's all right. I'm looking for a 17 from everyone. It's a big no for me. Okay. Uh, did anybody Does botch? Does anyone want to buy me determination? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I all right. got nine. All Mine's right. Okay. There is an explosion of heat that erupts out of this thing. As Actually, you know what? I probably should say Carmilla and Lady Alessandra, please roll me with disadvantage because you're writing it. Oh. And if it's, but if it's fire, I have resistance. Yeah, you do have resistance. Favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, uh... I'm just gonna eat shit. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating because well, I was like, yes, I succeed. No, oh, I thanks, random, random Bobby determination. It won't help me now, but I will no. use okay. it well in the uh, future. So, uh, as this thing explodes and drops you out of the ground, everybody who fails the save is gonna take 13 points of fire damage. Uh, Amy, you're gonna take six. Cool. <laughs> And as that explodes, you can you can hear the horrible sound echoing in your mind of that explosion. Bits of rusted metal are stuck to your flesh. Fire is everywhere. What do you all do? Oh, and um, is down. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm immediately going to do is run over and cast a Cure Wounds at third level on Anthea. Because <gasps> I saw her go down, probably. All right. Sandra's so, <laughs> so like holding a piece of the metal machine that he ripped off as he was going towards Anthea. Mm. Just... <laughs> I tried. Are you okay? <laughs> Just have a... <gasps> Have a sit I blacked board. out. What did I miss? <laughs> this sucks. However, Anthea, from where <laughs> yeah. you from where you got exploded, um, you exploded. are laying on some very pointy things right now. It's very uncomfortable. Ugh. I don't like this ground. Holy crap! How? But that's a Beneath. lot of hit points. Sorry. Just that third level. Oh, you said third level. Yeah. Okay. So you take 24 hit points. And as wow. you as you kind of sit up, um, you're going to feel that, you know, when like when you lay on something sharp and it kind of sticks into you a little bit, but doesn't actually puncture you. And then you sit up and it kind of falls off and you're like, oh, that feels so much better. Yeah. You do that. And glancing behind you, you're going to see a translucent blue, light blue crystal. Uh, shard veined with indigo light glowing on the ground as well as you're you're laying on a pile of precious stones right now that was in a crate oh. you were blown through wow treasure chest um 
<coughs> Perhaps you should try finding a different way to discover treasure? Oh, uh, I mean, it, it all worked out, right? Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. what, what's this one? She's going to hold that one up. It looks like you've seen this before. The it's a very room. basic magic item, a gem of brightness. Oh, a gem of brightness. Never mind. Cool. You'll also see that there are four large chunks of blue quartz and a fist size amethyst. Uh, or like a person fist size, not a half length fist size. Okay. <laughs> wow. It's huge. Oof. Okay, that's that's impressive. Well, that's nice. Let's just uh just uh put it in a bag. I hope I didn't crush all of my herbs. Oh, she's going to start checking for her no, herbs. You you do that and I'm going to go check on the others, Thank okay? You. Um Okay. Alessandra, Carmilla, Sindri. Any of you okay? Still alive? Oh, I'm a little singed, but... All right. Uh, Carmilla is somewhat turned away from <laughs> Alessandra. Uh, kind of trying to patch yourself up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use a second win if I can use that out of combat. You totally can, yeah. Cool. Well, I know I'm alive because I'm still hurting. <laughs> Oh, that's a good line. An unpleasant one, but a good one. Yeah. That so, is the first step. Do we think something's going to come after us here? Do you think we can rest a bit? I don't know. Uh, this should be fine. There is a, a place up ahead that could be used for respite. The um, mm -hmm. But uh, this is also fine. It's probably okay. I mean, <laughs> well, we've got is... a pretty good sight line, I think, and there's a wall here we could put our backs to. Um, yes. If we could rest a little bit, I'd appreciate it. Just to catch our breath a bit. I like to take a nap. Just a small well, that. little nap. I'm glad that you are all okay. I was worried you would uh, be dead from this trouble. I mean,. On the bright side, it was only fire. For me, anyway. Not all of us are immune to flames. Um, yes, well, I tend to be the one doing the healing. Weirdly. I hope if anyone is going to be immune, you are the best one to be. Plus, I'm fairly certain some of you are immune to things like... I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to hear your guess because I don't feel like I'm immune to anything, my friend. <laughs> I feel like I get the shit kicked out of me on a regular basis. You did pretty you well against the ogre. I'm sleeping though, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Possibly no. unpleasant. Alessandra's gonna use healing hands on herself. But I've learned to appreciate the feel of your healing magic and Anthea's healing magic. They both have a distinct flavor to them, but also, I don't know, maybe a sit's good. A sit'll do me good. So Cinder will just like saddle up beside Lyric and just slide down the wall. Oh wait, I think Squish got blowed up. Um. <laughs> oh shit! I think Squish uh... did get blowed up. He's got eleven hit points. Oh yeah, he got blowed up. Oh, he got. That's okay. He can come back. I need. <laughs> I need where, to retrieve his heart. Hold where is on. your squishy friend? Uh, he is squished all over the place. He's a little there mm -hmm. and a little mm -hmm. here. But that's okay, just as long as I find the... Oh, yeah. Just, I just Wait, need the heart. Can you give me a try and find it? I found it. Okay. Or should I make a finding roll? No, you can find it. Okay. It's, it's pretty specifically, it's very red. And as you go to look for it, you're going to see that it's at the um, at the southwesternmost corner of the room. It just got kind of mm. blown over there. And as you walk up to pick it up, you look out over a large chamber. Oh. Three levels of wooden scaffolding 
line this 30 foot tall cliff of dark stone. On the bottom most scaffolding, you can see six figures digging at the rock face. Oh. They are ashen and covered in crystals, much like the ash whites you fought just a moment ago. Along the length of the cliff runs an elevated set of rickety mine tracks. However, at the bottom of it, you see a glowing pool of water. At least that's what you think at first, but it's not water. It's blue, bubbling, churning lava. At the far end, you see an obsidian pyramid. Its faces bear relief carvings of ancient dwarves feasting, celebrating, and tending to their injured. Invertices are carved with intricate geometric patterns inlaid with silver. A recessed set of double doors stands before the pyramid. It is adorned with runes and circular channels that, grow, that glow faintly with green energy. Anthea is putting her hands over her mouth so she doesn't say anything and backing up to everybody else. There's more things down there. There's more things down there. Yeah, of course. So Ash and ash white. Like more of the crusty gross dwarf things. Six. <sighs> And then it's maybe so it's best to rest here first, if they did not notice you. Or the sound of the explosion. If they didn't notice that, then I think we're okay to have a nap. Yeah, I was pretty quiet. I guess that's a good idea. This time. When you're ready, I will show you around. There are many monsters for you to fight here. And much treasure for you to find, hey? Eh? Well, I want one of those things, so I guess I'll have to deal with the other. Is life. Is life. And I think that is where we're going to call game for tonight. Uh, so everybody go ahead and do your short rest so that we know you've done it. So roll your hit points, mark it off. <laughs> Um, and, uh, folks, we're going to be back in two weeks. So we're not going to be doing next week because we'll be recovering from extra life and running 14 games over a single weekend. Uh, but come back in two weeks as we finish, um, Zorula's rest or Zorzula's rest, I should say. Uh, but so, thank you so much. Little dungeon crawl there. So what's up? Um, Lyric was planning on using the song of rest. Sure. I don't know if she can do it really quietly. It, you know what? If the explosion didn't yet. alert these guys, like they're probably mindless or are stuck yeah, on okay. a singular task. That just means that anyone spending hit dice also heals an additional 1d6 hit points. Perfect. Good job. Back to hey. full. I'm oh, sorry. I'm back to full. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. You're going to need it. Uh, everybody's going to refresh their short rest abilities. And uh, while you guys are calculating all of that, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who supports us over on Patreon. We could not keep the channel going without supporters like you. In fact, supporters like uh, our divine producers, my mom and Kelowna Curd, uh, who are... It always sounds like they're a couple. I don't think they are. I hope they're not. Um, my stepdad would be upset. Uh, but... Unless my stepdad's Kelowna Curd. What? Anyway, thank you so much for your support, guys. Uh, thanks to our demonic producers, Precarious and Mysterium MK. Uh, our wizards of the Patreon, Tammy the Forever Cleric, the Ink Goblin, and Sorcerer Sanguine. And our high council of the Patreon, Taryn, Dustin, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Chef Aladeth, LaRuke, Mike Baxter, Iridian, and Brian Kaler. Y'all amazing. So is everybody who's on the Patreon, all the way from our level 10 heroes down to the Dork Squad. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much for keeping the channel afloat keeping the lights on allowing me to buy the occasional expensive coffee um let's be honest i kind of run on the stuff uh you're all amazing thank you so much if you'd like to join them and see a bunch of additional content go to patreon.com slash dorktales and you can get it for as little as five dollars us a month it's pretty reasonable better than netflix these days so uh yeah and with that uh any last things from anybody here perfect 
So with that, we will see you in two weeks after Extra Life. Be sure to come and enjoy us for Extra Life, where we're going to be raising money for the Children's Miracle Network. Um, it's a great cause, and it's a lot of fun. So even if you don't have any money to throw at the charity, come and enjoy, because the, the higher our view numbers look, the more people are going to come and watch, and maybe they'll donate if you can't afford to. Love you very much. And share much. it all on your social medias if you have, and tell all your friends and tell your put friends. it everywhere because al algorithmo will send people our ways. Yes, oh, definitely pray. tell your enemies because maybe they want to like outbid you and they, they want to like get into a donation war with you. I would love that. More, more donation wars, the better. Uh, but that's going to be it for us tonight. Thank you so much. From us at Fandelver and below, the Shattered Obelisk. Good night, everyone. <laughs>